Are we live? <laughs> oh my goodness, tonight we have some technical issues. I tried to go live earlier, but the stream just couldn't go live. I just couldn't connect my software to the live stream. I hope we are live now. I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, it's going to take some time for people to come in. Uh, if you guys can see me and hear me well, let me know. I'm just going to check on my YouTube now. Let's see if everything is okay. I am so sorry for the technical error earlier, guys. I am so, so, so sorry. Uh, if you guys can see me, can hear me, let me know if everything is well. I hope everyone is tuning in. <laughs> sorry for the mix up. I'm just going to drink some coffee to calm myself down. Hmm. A lot has happened in the past one week since the previous uh, stream on Thursday. I'm trying to do live streams on every Thursday now, so yeah. So after the stream on Thursday, uh, on Friday, we actually drove, me and my friends, uh, Bichu and a few friends, we drove four hours to the East Coast in Malaysia. Uh, we drove to Kuala Rompin for a fishing trip. And it was quite an interesting experience. I've never gone to deep sea fishing before. And that was quite an interesting trip. I caught the selfish for the first time in my life. So that itself was quite an experience. I'll see if I can uh, show you guys the fish that I caught. There it is. My first selfish. Not too shabby, right? <laughs> So I call this selfish. Uh, it was a full day trip. We went on Sunday, so uh, took us about eight nautical miles off the shore to catch this fish, and it was my first time doing it. So I was with uh, Nawishat and Shamin. Uh, shout out to Shamin and Nawishat from the Mute Fish Lady, amazing host and guide. So they helped me to catch this fish and they practice ethical fishing. We catch the fish and we release it unharmed. And they, they were really strict about sustainability in fishing. They were really strict about not harming the fish. They were also doing some research, taking some photographs and measurements of the fish. And it was quite an experience. And to top it off, on the, that particular same day, uh, they also had the international fishing competition and we were invited to attend as guests during the prize giving ceremony in the same evening. And you know what? The king, the young Dipatuan Agong, was there in the same hall and he was sitting like two tables away from me. What a treat! <laughs> So yes, it was, it was quite an experience in the last weekend. So I came back on Monday. I'm going to say hi to some people. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Uh, Raul Ramirez said, Good morning, Robin. Hey, Raul. It is actually evening now. You can see out the window. <laughs> hi, Raul. Thanks for dropping by. Bram, hey, thanks for confirming that you can see and hear me well. Dimares said, Hi Robin, hey, how are you? Thanks for dropping by. Carlos Estrazabal said, Good morning from sunny South Florida. Hello, how are you? Maggie, 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 Maggie said, Hi, <laughs> hello to you too. Carlos said, See you fine, thank you so much. Carmen said, Hi Robin, hey Carmen, thank you so much for dropping by. So good to see you here. Gonna drink some coffee. Mmm. Bram said, hello from Netherlands. Hello, hello from Malaysia. Jerome said, hi, we can see you. Thank you so much. I am so sorry about the mix up. I'm so sorry about the, the technical issue earlier. Man, sometimes it's just so hard to do live streams, right? You just think that everything will work out and suddenly everything just backfire and nothing works. I have to start a new stream. And I still couldn't figure out what went wrong. It could have been the software. I restarted the software. Didn't work. I restarted the, um, the, the stream. So, yeah. <sighs> Doing live stream is really, really challenging. Park Konmark said, Hi. Hello, Park. How are you? The MRS said, Yes, we can hear and see you. Thank you so much for the confirmation. Kyle Richard said, Hi, Robin. Hope you are well. We can see and hear you. Hey, Kyle. Thank you again. It's so nice to see you here again. Thank you so much for confirming. Mario Domenici said, Good day. Hey, Mario. How are you? Carmen said, Hi from the UK. Hey, Carmen. 
Jabba Sadiq. Hi. <laughs> Yes, we literally just saw each other like few hours ago at the camera fair. Yes, we should do a photo walk. Hey, hit me up. We should definitely plan something with Dr. Harris and the gang. I think it'll be really fun. Wow, that's a very... I'll try to pronounce the name right. Turukuvamun said hi. Hello to you too. Santix, hello from Good Court in Kajang. How are you? What are you eating? And by the way, Santix, how did the wedding shoot go last weekend? I hope it went well. You were doing a wedding for your, a wedding photography for your friend, right? If I remember correctly. Brian Heran said hello from Minnesota. Hey, Brian, how are you? Thanks for dropping by. Ovidio said hello from Romania. Hello, how are you? Santix said must have lens would be a super normal 40 millimeters or 35 millimeters range. Very good choice. We're going to get into the topic a little bit later. Marcus said, hello from Dusseldorf. Wow. Brian said, hi from Perth, Western Australia. Oh, I miss Perth. I studied and worked there before, so it has a special place in my heart. Ravish said, hi. Hello, Ravish. How are you? Jandro Mare said, greetings from Stuttgart to Malaysia. Hello to you too. And Drew Banner said, bloody computers. I know, right? I just couldn't figure out what went wrong. They just, the stream just refused to start. I just could not connect live. Ah, oh, man. Santik said, last weekend had a wedding shoot on the EM1 Mark II with Lumix 20mm. Wish that lens to be a much faster. Missed some shots due to the focusing far instead of near subject. Yeah, the focusing of that lens is a little bit unreliable. I don't mind using it for non-critical shoots, for personal projects, but if I were to do a professional job, I wouldn't use the Panasonic 20mm. It's just too slow and it hunts, right? So yeah, knowing that there's a chance that I'll miss a shot because of the slow autofocus, I wouldn't risk it. Aurel said, hi from Germany, forgotten to remove lens cap first. <laughs> No, it's not the lens cap, it's just some, I don't know, software issue, connection issue, some kind of issue, I have no idea. Barry Follows said, hi from UK. Hey Barry, thanks for dropping by, nice to see you here. Yes, Jabbar, we should plan something up really soon. Furious Doe said, hi Robin, the best photos ambassador we have. Oh, you're too kind. I'm no longer an ambassador, but I still use Micro Four Thirds, and I think it's a fantastic system. No reason for me to go elsewhere. Santik say photo walk, call me in. <laughs> it's photo walk of some people who actually invited me, so I'm not the one organizing here. Andrew Banner said, joining from Norfolk Coast, England. Hey, Andrew. Rob Track. Oh my goodness. Hey, Rob. So nice to see you here. What time is it here? It must be morning for you, right? Man, hey Rob, when are you gonna do your live stream again? I miss hearing your awesome voice. Dude, you gotta continue doing your live stream and I think a lot of people here agree that we miss you doing your live stream. Albio Viva said hello from Kern. Hey Albio, how are you? Jason, hello from Bangsar. Hey Jason, how are you? It is late. Hey, go get some rest. Don't worry about this stream. You can watch this stream later, Jason. And if you guys don't know who Jason is, Jason has a very important history in my photography journey. So he was the one that was responsible to get me to start using serious cameras. So I was using like point and shoot cameras at the time. It was a Kodak uh, compact camera and my camera died. I was thinking of buying another compact camera, right? And Jason was the one stopping me saying, Robin, no, you have got to upgrade to a DSLR. This was like way before mirrorless and DSLR was like the industry standard of professional cameras, right? So it was like, Robin, you have got to upgrade. and. Thanks to Jason, I am here today where I am and you know, <laughs> hey Jason, we have to catch up for some lunch or dinner sometime soon. Santik said, wedding shoot went well, actually still got it, being yours not shooting wedding. I'm glad to hear it. and like we all said, Micro Four Thirds is good enough for professional shoots. Gossi Kuzman said, Micro Four Thirds advocate, yep, that's a very nice way to put it. Santis said, 20mm field of view is something that I like. It fits my eye and field of view, maybe to try 17 f1.8. I think 
20 is great, but I personally prefer to work with something much wider like 28 or something much longer like 50, but that's just my personal preference. Uh, if 20 works for you, then of course go for it. Rodolfo said, Hi Robin, here from Toronto, Canada. I'm a hobbyist and my two favorite lenses these days, it changes constantly, are 40 to 150 f2.8 with 2 times teleconverter for wildlife and 17 f1.2 for urban and street. Very good choices, two different lenses for two different occasions. I like that you segregate or you separate these two scenarios because a lot of people will say, ah, I just have one lens to do everything. But in reality, we use different lenses for different situations, right? So there you go. For wildlife photography, you do need longer lenses, a telephoto lens. And of course, for street photography, you do need something a lot wider. Solid choices you have there. Albio Vivas said, I was really wondering on changing my T6i for a new camera. At the end, I just bought a new 24mm pancake lens and a photography course to learn and improve basics. That is true. Get a better lens and uh, invest in education or invest in your skills. Jason, of course, I'm going to... No, I'm not going to stop telling that story. You bloody called me and we talked for like one hour on the phone. And, and bear in mind that back then, when we call interstate, like Jason was in Malacca and I was in Kuching at that time, when we call interstate, it was really expensive, man. <laughs> so yeah, that call meant a lot to me. I'll forever remember that. I'm going to keep repeating the story again and again and again. <laughs> Cheers to that. Hmm. Jandro Mare said, what DSLR do you get first? I got the Olympus E410. I used it for about three months and the camera got stolen. It was a very tragic story. I'm going to tell the story maybe some other time. And then I upgraded to E520 and I stuck with that camera for many, many, many years. So technically, my first camera was E410, but it felt more like the E520 to me. Jason says, please update the story of us how we are 13 bowls of Colomy in four days. <laughs> I don't think people here know what Colomy is. I don't think they care, but Colomy is like an awesome dish that we have from Kuching, my hometown. I love it. I eat it growing up. And recently, me and Jason, we made a trip to Kuching. By the way, Jason is an, an important friend. Uh, he's been, we have been friends for like since forever. And recently, we made a trip to Kuching, my hometown, and we swallowed like 13 bowls in a day in four days i thought in a day <laughs> are you sure it was four days nakakata said i ditched my pana Leica 15 f1.7 for the 14 f2.5 for street am i crazy no not really i think uh maybe you prefer the wider field view maybe you prefer the lens to be smaller that 14 f2.5 is the smallest autofocus lens for micro four thirds so having such a tiny lens and a slightly wider coverage I thought it makes sense perfectly. Santi said, well, nobody cares if the camera and lens is Marco Four Thirds. People want moments. That is true. Uh, technicality or obsession on technical profession should come second to getting that decisive moment, right? Especially if you're shooting weddings, it is the moment that matters more. Carl Richards said, a 14 or 20 millimeters definitely needs a refresh. That is true. We need faster autofocus. We need maybe wider ceiling on these lenses, right? That would have been really awesome. Rob Track says, my, my must-have lens is the 25 f1.8. I know, right? Rob, I am also a 50 millimeters shooter. Like for whatever camera that I have, if I were to use a full frame or a APS-C camera, or even uh, recently I bought the one system, the Nikon one inch system, the interchangeable lens camera. Uh, it was a Nikon J1. Immediately, I actually look for the 50 millimeters equivalent first before I purchase the camera. If I don't have a 50 millimeters equivalent, I wouldn't get the camera. So I understand you. And that Olympus 25 f1.8 is such an underrated lens that lens is sharp the bokeh is beautiful it is just excellent the rendering for the lens is just beautiful 
Zumipa91 said, Greetings from Bulgaria. Robin, you are awesome. Love watching your vids. Oh, you are too kind, man. Favorite lens 25 f1.8, not expensive and epic photos. That is true. The 25 f1.8 is such an excellent, excellent lens. Now, we're going to stop here because I have some updates on my life. Uh, just now, I mentioned that I went fishing. And if you can see the selfish that I caught last weekend, it was quite epic, right? <laughs> and immediately after I came back from that fishing trip, it was uh, on Monday. Uh, and Monday night, actually, we came back from Kuala Rompin. It was a four hours drive. And on Tuesday, I actually attended a Google event in Malaysia. It was the YouTube Creator Day. I'm not sure if you can see my past here. You can get it in focus. This uh, YouTube Malaysia Creator Day on the 10th of October. It was uh, about half day event. It starts at 10, it finishes in the afternoon or maybe around two or three. Uh, where some YouTubers were invited for like a seminar, a conference thing. I think there were like 60 or 70 of us. We went to the Google headquarters in Malaysia. Well, it's not an everyday thing to be invited to go into the Google office, right? So there was quite an experience. We met some people from Google Malaysia, Google Singapore. They gave some talk. They shared some tips on how to grow a channel. They talk about some changes in the policies, especially in advertising. Um, safety guidelines or they also talk about um, how to manage the channel better they share there was a panelist invited to share some tips on how she managed to grow her channel using shorts uh, they were, or even what to look for in the analytics uh, very technical things uh, relating to YouTube uh, especially if you are a content creator and how to use the tools that YouTube already has provided us and some changes moving forward. I thought it was quite informative. I learned some things. Uh, it was definitely an interesting experience, especially also meeting fellow content creators from different, totally different fields. I did not see any um, photography YouTubers there. There were other YouTubers doing dance or there were cooking channels or I remember there was this one lady from Johor. She was uh, doing automobile or car related videos. Uh, definitely quite a variety of other YouTubers. Nice to see the ecosystem. Uh, a lot of other content creators in Malaysia doing YouTube and we share ideas. Uh, we, we talk up to each other and, and share like what we were doing. So it was really a, a fun day on, on Tuesday. And it was Tuesday, right? Uh, yesterday I had, uh, I did a video. Uh, no worries. Oh, and on Monday, I almost forgot. On Monday, if you have missed, I actually published my sort of like a mini review. I share my opinion on this particular lens. This is the Yongnuo 12 to uh, 35 f 2.8 to f4 so i published my thoughts i shared some sample photographs on this lens it's on my youtube channel now please check it out i thought this is a fantastic lens it is a good step up from the kit lenses say if you have the olympus 14 to 42 f 3.5 to 5.6 or the panasonic 12 to 32 f uh 3.5 to 5.6 then i thought that this yongno will be the perfect uh step up from these basic kit lenses and if you don't want to splurge on the higher end say the Olympus 12-40 f2.8 Pro or the Panasonic 12-35 f2.8 Pro or the Panasonic 12-60 f2.8 to f4 these lenses will cost about almost twice what of what this particular Yongno is asking for I thought this Yongno uh, it's a great lens. It has internal zoom. It has weather sealing. Optically, it is quite good. It has a macro mode. So I thought that's a good alternative. The only downside of the thing that I don't like about this Yongno 12-35 is that the autofocus is not as fast as the Olympus 12-40 uh, to f2.8 Pro or any native micro four thirds lenses up to this point. I don't think they got the autofocus right. I hope they can update the firmware on this lens and make sure the autofocus is on par with the micro photo lenses from both Panasonic and Olympus, then it would have been a perfect lens that I can recommend to anyone. At the moment, I would still recommend like using native Olympus and Panasonic lenses because of the superior autofocus. So that was on Monday and Tuesday I attended the, um, the YouTube event. And actually, if you are in Malaysia and you, have, you are free, uh, 
Today until Sunday from 12 to 15 of October, there is a camera fair by YL. So YL camera is the largest retailer in Malaysia and they are doing this YL photo fair 2023 where they bring in all the other big players, the Canon, we have Nikon, we have Fujifilm, we have OM Digital Solutions there, we have Panasonic, we have Sigma, we have Rico, we have Profoto, we have all the big brands uh, all in one space uh, doing this photo fair. So we have the latest cameras like Fuji GFX 100S, uh, sorry, GFX 100 Mark II. We have the Nikon ZF camera there. We have the Panasonic G9 Mark II. Yes, I saw the Panasonic G9 Mark II already in person. We have all these latest cameras, even from Sony, the latest cameras like A7C, R or is it, I think it is A7C Mark II, all the latest cameras from Canon, Nikon, uh, they are all there, uh, which I think you should definitely check it out if you are in Malaysia. And it is happening whole day from 10, shopping mall hours from 10 all the way until evening, 9 o'clock uh, at PJ33, Jaya33. So go to YL Camera and Jaya33, they took out the entire ground floor space with all these different booths. And they also have talks from different brands like On Digital Solutions, they're going to talk about, they're going to share about the birding with the Olympus system or the On Digital Solutions system. Uh, Sigma is going to, they're going to share about content creation with their Sigma products. Sony is going to talk about about portraits and lighting and uh, everyone's have something to share so if you have time definitely check them out I think most of the talks and sharing will be concentrated in the Saturday the weekends Saturday and Sundays so it's a full day event check them out this is something from Nikon something from Fuji everyone has something to share and of course I think you're gonna find some discounts as well I bought a new camera back there a very good price if you are looking for accessories like tripod or SD cards um, you definitely can find some really good deals there. Uh, some of the even new products, they have significant discount there and you can already pre-order some new products like Panasonic G9 Mark II if you're looking for that camera or Nikon ZF, you can definitely go there and pre-order on the spot. So check them out. It is happening at YL Camera in Jaya 33. Uh, YL Photo Fair is happening uh, from today until Sunday. Uh, I will personally be there on Sunday to check out some stuff. I was already there today earlier to do some vlogging, but I'll probably go there again on Sunday afternoon just to say hi to some people. So if you are there on Sunday, do say hi to me. And yeah, we can talk and chill in person, right? Yeah, that will be really, really, really fun. I was there with my friends, John and Andrew, this afternoon. Uh, we had fun. I, it was nice seeing a lot of people. I thought today it will be quite empty. There will be less people, but there were so many people there already. And the opening ceremony is actually tomorrow. <laughs> Think about that. This. Oh, and also they also provide like free uh, camera sensor cleaning services. So if you have like on digital solutions cameras, Olympus cameras and lenses, you can bring it to them on Saturday and Sunday for free cleaning, uh, not just Olympus or M Digital Solutions. They also provide sensor cleaning for Nikon cameras, uh, I think Sony, Canon cameras. So just bring your camera along and yeah, they'll clean your image sensor for you on the spot for free. <laughs> Why not, you know? And that itself is a uh, good enough reason to go there and, you know, of course, to mingle and meet some other awesome photographers like myself. I think I'm pretty awesome, right? Okay, <laughs> enough about that. Um, you know, meet other people, like met other people, find people to hang out with or to do photography with. I thought it's quite an awesome, awesome place. All right, coming back to the comments. Uh, Turuku Vamun said, my most used lens is a Sigma 16 f1.4. I have no issue with that lens. I think Sigma make amazing lenses. It's just that the Sigma 16 f1.4, I think it's quite monstrous in size. And rightfully so, that lens was not originally designed for micro four thirds. It was designed to cover a larger image circle by an APS-C mount camera. So that's why it's a lot larger. I thought like if Sigma made a 16 f1.4 for micro four thirds, it could have been maybe 30, 40% smaller and they would have been really awesome. Tony B said, Hi Robin, my 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro lives on my EM1 Mark II. I use it 95% of the time. I think 12 to 40 is such an awesome, awesome lens. I think it's a must have if you are a professional photographer. Santi said, Actually, a standard zoom 
if lens must have if 1720 micro four thirds for prime yeah i think like i said 12 to 40 f2.8 pro is certainly a must have you if you are a working professional using micro four thirds system carlos as a as uh, Zabal said, most used lens is the Olympus 25 f1.8. Wow, seems like the 25 f1.8 is a popular lens. A lot of people are using this lens and it is such an awesome lens. It is so small, so sharp, produces fantastic image quality, just the right focal length. And I'm a 15 millimeters shooter. So if you are a 15 millimeters guy, I think that's a must have lens. Ed Mendoza said, good morning from Mexico. Greetings, Robin. Hey, Ed, how are you? Thanks for dropping by. Harry Burns said, my favorite lens is the 12-100 to f4, perfect for travel. I think that's a great lens if you want one lens to do it all, and if you need a little bit of telephoto in your photography. That is from a wide-angle 24 equivalent to 200 at a constant f4, and that lens is weather sealed. It's super sharp from wide all the way to the longest end, and it has image stabilization built in. You can use a uh, sync is for much better uh, image stabilization i think it's a fantastic lens i only wish that the lens is slightly smaller but i understand that it's more like two lenses in one so to ask for a smaller lens is also quite impossible but i think it is a great lens for what it is Muhammad Suleiman said, what is the ch best cheap zoom lens for panasonic g85 in your opinion uh the two of the 32 I think it's a fantastic lens. It does come with the lens, uh, sorry, the camera already. If you don't have that lens, then find it in uh, the used market. I think you should get it for quite cheap. Len Faris said, which focal length range do you recommend for a travel zoom lens? Currently, I have the 24 to 60. I wonder if other photographers recommend longer. Depends on what you want to do if you're travel. If you're doing wildlife photography, of course, you're going to need something like uh, 75 to 300 or even longer, right? To, for the reach, if you're going for safaris, you want to shoot animals from a distance. But if you don't intend to shoot wildlife, you don't need uh, that long of a lens. Anything wider, like a 12 to 40 lens or anything, even a prime lenses i'll stick with prime lenses right i'll bring like a 25 or 45 that will have been uh, sufficient for what i need to do so it comes down to what you do or if you need to do like uh milky way or if you want to do a lot of landscape you need that sweeping panorama shot then maybe you need something wider like 9 to 18 or even a 7 to 14 lens to to fit as much as you can within a shot for that landscape that awesome landscape shot right john gordon said hi robin i love what you share you are my favorite photographer to go happy to be here thank you so much john I, I appreciate you being here and i really appreciate your kind words and i just continue to do what i do here because you guys are here so thank you so much andrew banner said my bag is always packed with the 12 to 40 f 2.8 40 to 150 f 2.8 and the 16 macro the gear is so small that i can pack two bodies a drone few filters and all the accessories i rarely go out with less now i already think that the 12 to 40 and 40 to 150 f 2.8 are quite large i personally would bring smaller lenses like the 12 f2 uh 25 f 1.8 and 45 f 1.8 i really need a long range so i'll just pack the 40 to 150 r which is the f4 to 5.6 which is good enough if i don't need to work with low light and i think that uh the 40 to 150 r is also very sharp and it's an excellent lens so i am definitely going minimal i want the smallest footprint possible when i travel i want to carry just a small bag chuck in smaller primes and it's just so much easier for me to manage i don't have to worry about larger lenses or larger anything big right the smaller the lighter the better for travel but that's just me Brian Tan said, uh, 75 f1.8 is like my must-have lens for medium telephoto and Panas Leica 12-35 f2.8 for street. If you can live with a zoom lens, I think 12-35 gives you a lot of flexibility to work with. For me, when I do street, I prefer to shoot with fixed prime lenses, fixed focal length, like 17 f1.8 or 45 f1.8, depending on what I'm doing. Recently, my favorite has been the 15 f1.7. It has been amazing. Uh, it gives me the wide angle coverage i 
treat it like a 28 millimeters lens although i know it's equivalent to about 30 millimeters but i think it is wide enough for me to do what i want to do and it's f1.7 so it's extra fantastic uh 75 f1.8 yes that is my staple lens for stage photography if i'm doing my jobs i need a medium telephoto actually it's not really medium telephoto think about it it's 150 millimeters equivalent so it's actually at the longer telephoto and of course it's not extreme telephoto but it's actually at the longer end already and i rarely need anything longer than 75 f1.8 because as an official photographer as the working photographer i have the privilege to move closer to the stage sometimes i can climb on top of the stage to get close to the subject that i'm shooting so 75 f1.8 is like my go-to lens if i were to do say music concert or mini concert theater stage anything uh to do with event photography it is a my go-to lens Santi said, what I didn't like for that wedding are aunties asking to take photos with their mobile phones. Even before I took the official group photo, just, hey, you helped me take using my phone. I was offended. I think there is an art to declining that, um, but I haven't been doing wedding in a while, so I, I don't know how ferocious these aunties get these days. There was once... Uh, when I was still actively doing wedding, I would politely refuse. I said, hey, um, you know what? The, the clients or the wedding couples, they hire me to shoot and I have to focus. And, you know, taking the phone is actually slowing me down. And, you know, can you get like someone else to, to take a photograph? You know, you don't need a photographer for that. Yeah. Of course, you have to do it in a very polite manner without offending anyone. I think that is very tricky uh but i've i've done it before and the aunties seem okay with me so i'm sure you can do it mark said hey robin my favorite lens for sync photos is 75 f1.8 i love that 75 f1.8 too furious though said you are the google most important creator i guess no that's not true there were a lot bigger creators than me there were people with 1 million 2 million subscriber counts there were people with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of subscribers so i only have like 71 thousand subscribers so i was possibly one of the smallest creators at the event so in terms of number game i was the most insignificant creator <laughs> attending the event but the, the purpose of going to the event is to network to get to know other people to to get to know the people in the google um or the youtube office right and of course to learn some tips on how to read analytics or how to grow the channel so going in humble is very important because it is good to learn a few new things, to get to know a few more people. And hey, at the end of the day, we all help each other. It's a small ecosystem and, you know, it is still a very good opportunity to grow. Yeah. <laughs> Ivan says, my must-have lens, no doubt, the Olympus 12-40 f2.8 Pro. Yeah, the 12 40 is such an awesome, awesome lens, right? It's such a must-have lens. Paolo... Kalha said, hello Robin, hey Paolo, how are you? Greetings from Lisbon. My most used lens is the Panalaika 15 f1.7. I'm using that lens more and more recently. But for photos that I like the most were taken with the Olympus 75 f1.8. That is such an awesome lens, right? Yeah, the image from 75 f1.8 is so amazing. Agree with you, Rondolfo. Uh, 3D print creator says, my most used lens on my EM1 Mark II are the 12 40 f2.8, the 40 50 f2.8 for sure, and 75 for non Olympus Pro lens. Probably the best lens I have, not yet always usable. Yeah, those, I think that if you have these two lenses, the 12 40 f2.8 and the 40 150 f2.8, you can do like almost everything. Like as a professional photographer, or even if you want to do anything, right? These two lenses can cover the the important focal lengths. The only other lens I would recommend to complete the trinity is the 7 to 14 f2.8. Once you have this holy trinity, 7 to 14, 12 to 40, and 40 to 150, all the f1.8 lenses, right? You can do like everything basically <laughs> rob george says 25 f1.2 pro is just outstanding i agree got to micro four thirds by accidentally purchasing an em10 and compare it to my nikon df at 50 f1.8 was blown away by the sharpness and iq well it's not fair to compare with that nikon f1.8 uh because 
the older Canon and Nikon 50f1.8, they are designed to be budget lenses. And because they are designed to be budget lenses, they are made to be small, compact, and they don't put the best optics in this f1.8 lenses. So at f1.8, the images come out soft. Of course, if you compare with Olympus uh, 50f25 f1.2, the images are already so sharp, wide open at f1.2. Of course, the bokeh quality from the Nikon 50f1.8, even Canon 50f1.8, the bokeh Okay, it's harsh, it's nervous, you get like serious chromatic aberration, you get corner softness, you get flare, you get all kinds of problems, right? So if you compare with like Olympus 25 f1.8 or even a 25 f1.2 Pro, it is a Pro lens, it's just not fair. <laughs> Rob says, click the like button if you want more live streams from Robin. Ah, oh, Rob, can we click more like buttons so we can get more live streams from Rob Track instead? Hey, how does that sound? <laughs> hey, I miss seeing you live, man. Rob, where have you been? Rondolfo says, I wish OM Systems released a weather sealed version of 75 f1.8. I think it's not just the 75 f1.8. I think they should update all the f1.8 lenses, like from the 12 f2, the 17 f1.8, the 25 f1.8, 45 f1.8, and 75 f1.8, right? All these lenses, they need an upgrade in Mark II version with weather sealing. That would have been so, so awesome. Santik says, aunties being vain and stood in front, had stern talk to them that I capture moments for a bridegroom to cherish for life. You aunties can take after me and just unimportant Facebook, uh, WhatsApp snapshots. Well, you gotta do it with a respectful manner. Hey, after all, they are guests to the couple. You don't want to insult or offend anyone. Uh, the last thing you want is some aunties complaining to the couple being unhappy. It, there is an art in saying no. There is an art in telling people, hey, um, I need to do my job. Uh, let me do my job first. And maybe you get someone else to take the snapshots with the, the smartphone. It's not easy. I think uh, sometimes some people will still get offended. But hey, at least you. the important thing is you do it in a polite manner. You do it in a respectful manner. If they want to get insulted, then it's not your problem anymore. You know, it's just that as a photographer, if I'm being paid to do my job, I have to prioritize my camera first. I need to prioritize getting the moments for the couple. And if someone else asks me to take photographs, if I'm free, of course, but if I am doing my job, then I cannot be touching your smartphone. You get what I mean? So yeah, the, you got to figure out the balance of saying no and trying not to offend anyone. Biron Zila said, so what is your opinion on the 14 to 35 F2? Okay, the origi original Zuko 14 to 35 F2, the super high grade lens. I think it's excellent in terms of uh, lens flow control, sharpness, image quality, bokeh. But I also think that it's too large. It's unnecessarily large and heavy. And I also think that it's too expensive. If they were to make the same size for micro four thirds and going for the same pricing, it's not going to work. But knowing that it was designed for four thirds, so of course it was a DSLR design with uh, distance from the mirror to the lens, so it has to be at a certain size. I understand that. Now, if they can downsize it to maybe 40% smaller and make it about 40% cheaper, I think it can work. Brandon Patterson said, Hey Robin, greetings from the UK. Do you have a lens and set up recommendation, recommendation for freezing action in relatively low light for street photography? Get the f1.8 lenses. Any of the f1.8 lenses, 17 f1.8, 25 f1.8, 45 f1.8. With the prime lens, with the bright aperture, you gather more light. You can increase your shutter speed. You can go faster without raising your ISO unnecessarily. Alternatively, just ramp up the ISO, don't worry so much, get the moment. Noise is noise, noise will be there, but noise is not the problem. Missing the moment is the problem. So don't be afraid of the high ISO noise, but be afraid of missed moments. Send what we said. Hi Robin, greetings from Kuala Tringanu. Hey, how are you, fellow Malaysian? My must-have lens is the... Uh, M Zuko 12 to 40 f 2.8 Pro lens. Any significant difference with the 12 to 40 Pro Mark II? I think the big difference is in terms of coating. The coating will prevent flare or ghosting a little bit better if you're shooting against uh, backlight or tricky lighting situation. 
uh, that new coating in the Mark II version will handle that situation a little bit better. But if you don't mind using uh, the lens hood, which is provided, you should be if you are in that kind of situation, then it will help you to prevent flare. So I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I think in terms of optical formula, it's about the same, not much difference. Radu Balance Set 12 to 100 and 42.5. Very solid choices. Very solid choices. Santi said, while Photo Fair, I'll be going on Saturday morning until late afternoon. I will be going. I was already there today earlier, and I'll be going again in Sunday afternoon. 3D printer print creators uh, talking to Rondolfo. Weather suit version of 75 will be an awesome. Yeah, I agree. Giorgio Grassi said, I've just bought the 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro, but I think that the must have lens for micro four thirds is the 12 to 200 because even if it suffer variable aperture, the variability of the angle of view is amazing. Well, it depends. Some people don't need the, the reach of 200 millimeters, you know? Not everyone shoots that far. And if you are like myself, and I do a lot of street photography, 45 millimeters is already far enough of a long reach. So I'll argue that 12 to 40 is sufficient and I'll appreciate prefer to use prime lenses over zoom lenses any day for my street photography. Before I go on, I'm just going to drink some water, getting a little bit thirsty. How is everyone doing so far? You guys, there's like 138 of you here. That's amazing. Hmm. Ah, looking like fresh plain water. Ivan, Ivan Shaparo said, question. Four thirds lenses can be found on the cheap. What are the most underrated four third lenses to be used on with four thirds adapter? I don't think there is anything that I would recommend. I would still recommend using native micro four thirds lenses because when you adapt the older DSLR lenses on the micro four thirds cameras, there'll be some compromise when it comes to autofocus. Even if you use the latest EM1 Mark III or the OM1, there will be some issues with autofocus. I'll still push for micro four thirds lenses and I don't think micro four thirds lenses are expensive. Count Dracula said, huh, very nice name. My must have lens is a 28mm spoiled by Ricoh GR1. So, are you saying the 14 f2.5? Because that's the only 28mm equivalent lens for micro four thirds, if you ask me. Or are you saying that you are you still using the Ricoh GR1? Uh, and A said, can't lie, the 25 f1.8 is my only lens that I need. Yep, that is an awesome, awesome lens. Warburg MS, hey, nice to see you here, Warburg. I quite like the 9mm f1.7, really versatile, takes landscape architecture groups without being tight, nice feather bokeh, sharp and great in low light. This could be my daily lens. It is my main vlogging lens now. If I were to do any vlogging, I'll definitely use the 9mm f1.7. I like that it's really small, really light. It is wide enough to do what I need to do. And yet it is f1.7, which is uh, really bright as I can use it in low light and I can still get some subject separation if I need. And it's really sharp as well. And one thing that I really like about this lens is that it can go really, really close, like super close up for some really dramatic kind of composition. It's such an amazing, amazing lens. Definitely recommend this lens to anyone uh, if you need some wide angle prime right i agree with you count dracula asks what is good budget portrait lens other than 45 f1.8 75 f1.8 seems more expensive you can check out the sigma 30 f1.4 or the 56 f1.4 i think these are underrated it's not expensive and they produce fantastic results Fierce though asks, freelance cleaning. I use that a lot after my travels to Kalahari in Botswana. Yeah, if you are in, in the area, you can definitely check out. I think most of the cleaning services, they are around for Saturday and Sunday. Do check out the slots, uh, check out the Facebook pages from respect respective brands. They offer freelance, oh no, sorry, sensor cleaning services. Aurel asks, what do you think about CCTV or Pentax 110 lenses on Micro Four Thirds since they are cheap and tiny? No autofocus, no go for Robin. I just cannot be bothered with manual focus. At this point, all I want is just focus on getting my shot. If I have to think about turning that manual focusing ring and worry if my shot is in focus or not, that's just too distracting. I would rather spend my brain power on composition, storytelling, and getting that decisive moment. 
I don't want the extra worry about focusing is just unnecessary. Even if it's cheap, it is not worth it. Lam Ferry said was at exhibition. Uh, all the photos were in 5 4 aspect ratio and really liked it. Unfortunately, my camera does not support that. Any tips? Uh, which aspect ratio do you like? Just crop it if you really like the aspect ratio. You don't lose much. For me, I shoot with the native aspect ratio that the lens, uh, sorry, the image sensor provides. So if it's a micro four thirds camera, it is four thirds. So I'll just shoot four thirds. It maximizes the entire sensor width or height, right? If I'm shooting with an uh, say a Canon or Nikon, which I have now, and the native aspect ratio is 3.2. So I'll just shoot with 3.2, no issue whatsoever. I don't need to change my aspect ratio. Sorry, I cannot pronounce your name. Hi from Moscow. Hello, thanks for dropping by. My favorite lens is 75-300, an awesome lens. This lens is compact and fit in small bag. I can photograph birds on my way to work through the park. Wow, that is an excellent activity to get some bird shots before you arrive in your office. Man. Rob Track says, for my pro work 7 to 14, I mostly do architecture. Yes, Rob, uh, if you guys don't know Rob, he does amazing interior architectural shoots. Uh, do check out his channel. I think you guys can just right click or use that three dots from the Rob's profile in the chat and go to his channel. Do check out his channel. He does amazing uh, tutorials. He does amazing tips and tricks videos uh, for Micro Four Thirds system. And he does fantastic architecture work as well. So do check him out, give him a subscribe. He does live stream. He used to do a lot of live stream. Jojo asked, 12 to 200 is the lens to have. Not really. 12 to 200 is a good lens. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's a bad lens, but I also feel that if you don't need the reach, then there are other better lenses. I'd rather have, say, the 12 to 32 or 14 to 42 plus one or two prime lenses, right? Carl Richards said, I have so many favorite lenses. Sigma 30, Sigma 56 is a beauty, and I couldn't love uh, Panasonic 100 to 400. Yeah, these are all amazing, amazing lenses. Wow, I am really far behind the chat. Let me catch up. Lucas Rawa said, I mainly shoot portraits and always use the 45 f1.2. I love this lens. The bokeh on that 45 f1.2 is amazing, right? And we have a super chat from Frank. Thank you so much, Frank. <laughs> Guys, any contribution from buy me coffee or anything from uh, the super chat or if you are contributing directly to my PayPal or if you use my affiliate links to to support me to buy anything from Amazon or B&H is fully, fully appreciated. Anything, any of your support definitely help me to fund my uh, next video or any of the content that I'm creating. Obviously, to make content, to make video, it takes resources and time. I use my own time, I use my own money to, to fund these videos. So anything, any contribution for you guys will definitely help me to continue making more videos in the future for you guys. So thank you so much, Frank. It's deeply, deeply appreciated. All right. Ed Mendoza said, a must-have lens for me would be, besides the 50 or the 105 macro, would be in full-frame terms. Yep, definitely. 50 millimeters is definitely important. Santi said, if there will be a 12 to 50 replacement, it would be great, like a small coat cane size, internal focusing and weather sealed, 12 to 50 Mark II, <laughs> F2.8 and F4. Well, the size will not be the same. It will have to be twice the size of whatever that we have now if you were to get it to f2.8 to f4 right instead of f3.5 to f6.3 well board say 9 f1.7 is so compact and great for travel to stick in the bag or maybe pocket i don't know if any is any good for astrophotography why wouldn't it be good for astrophotography <laughs> i think it's excellent for astrophotography carlos said let's all give the video a thumbs up oh thank you so much carlos and we're gonna drink to that cheers hmm Ah, Tristan Koget says, the little Lumix 12 to 32 and 45 to 150 together are really all I need for travel. They cover everything and weigh nothing. I use a close up filter on the 40 to 154 macro. That is an excellent choice. May I propose a um, 
macro extension tube instead of using a close-up filter because filter is attached in front of the lens and anything that you attach optically will definitely reduce the amount of light that comes into the lens, will alter the light somehow, you will lose some quality. Whereas if you use an extension tube, which has nothing, no optics, no glass whatsoever, it just adds the distance between the sensor and the lens, whether you want to attach the 12 to 32 or the 45 to 150 with the extension tube, you can get really high magnification with zero loss whatsoever, and you still have autofocus if you buy the ones with the electronic contacts, and they are so cheap. Do look into extension tubes. Nicole said, but I also like the 40 to 150 f4 to 5.6. I love it too. To a more distance with my subject, for example, of course, the 17 f1.8 if you want to go all out in low light and inconspicuous. That's true. 17 f1.8 is an excellent lens. I'm using the lens on my camera now for this live stream. That's the 17 f1.8. Azim Abar. Hey, Azim. How are you? Happy with my Yongno 235 f2.8 to f4 on my EM1 Mark II, saving for Olympus 40 to 150 f4 Pro for fairly lightweight telephoto. Meanwhile, I will try the old Olympus 40 to 150 f3.5 to 4.5. Glad that you like the Yongno f2.8 to f4. I think it is an excellent lens. It is a great budget option. And of course, uh, the 40 to 150 f4 Pro is a great lens. But um, may I suggest, uh, if you don't already have, you can consider the 40 to 1. Sorry, a little bit burping there. May I suggest the 40 to 150 f4 to 5.6? It is really cheap. It is really small and compact, it's very light, and yet it is very sharp. I know, of course, the 40 to 150 f4 is a better lens optically, it's sharper, it's weather sealed, it's not much bigger, but that 40 to 150R, the budget lens, is so cheap. You should just consider getting it first and see if you like it. Christine says, thank you. Hey, thanks for being here, Christine. You're always around saying thank you. I appreciate you. Hey, thank you so much for being here always. Patrick says, I would love to see Olympus or Panasonic like I'm making a 6 f1.7 to dream wide-angle lens. I think it's not impossible to make 6 millimeters as Lawa is already making a 6 f2. So a 6 f1.7 is not too impossible to make. I think it's definitely possible. It's just in terms of cost, in terms of size, and how they're going to implement autofocus, right? And control the distortion, control the chromatic aberration, because it's a little bit tricky. The wider it gets, the more difficult it is. Jeff Painter. Hey, Jeff. Nice to see you here. How are you? Jeff says, Hi, Robin, everyone. My go-to lens on my OM-1 is the 300F4 Pro, often with the 2x teleconverter as I shoot mainly wildlife. That Olympus 300F4 is such a majestic lens. I remember when Olympus launched that lens, the engineers were so proud of that lens. It is like dear pride, and it's like a huge technological marvel and achievement. James says, recently sold the 20 and 14 and bought the Toyota 45 Pro for travel. I think Toyota 45 is an excellent lens for travel. It is so small, it's versatile, it's constant F4, and it is weather sealed. And the lens is so, so sharp. Jet Set Journeys, hey Jet Set Journeys, how are you? Nice to see you here. Dave says, just sold my 20 and regret it already. Oh, then buy it, <laughs> get it back. Andrew, how are you? I was just hanging out with Andrew and another friend, John, in the afternoon. We were at the YL Camera Fair. Andrew says, Robin, when will we see you reviewing Sony cameras? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, it's not that I don't want to get a Sony camera. I just haven't found a Sony camera that I want to buy or that I need. So, I don't know. Sony camera, if you are watching... I'm available. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by, Andrew. Brand says, uh, on manual-only lens, I choose Metacon 25 f0.95, the micro four-thirds mount, because it is so small, sharp enough, and wide open, and the light gathering power is insane. <laughs> yes, no autofocus, no go for Robin. I tried some f0.95 lenses. I've tried the um, 7 Artisans 35 f0.95. I thought it was quite excellent, uh, but I sold it off. Again, it's just too much trouble, and f0.95 is not easy to manual focus, right? And if you can say, oh, you can stop down to 
Alonso f2.8 f4, but then again, I got an f0.95 lens. I want to shoot wide open at f0.95, right? If not, why did I buy f0.95? And man, that that will feel is so shallow. It's just crazy. Santi says from the comments, it seems the EM1 Mark II is a favorite camera. Of course, it is it's such an excellent camera. I still use it as my main workhorse. This is my EM1 Mark II here. I use it for vlogging earlier at the YL Camera Fair. I'm uh, gonna see the video coming out really soon. I'm gonna publish it next Monday. Still going strong after more than six to seven years. Still a good choice. Of course, will there be an upgraded EM1 Mark II S? Nah. There's already EM1 Mark III and now the OM1, they're not gonna go back. All right, Dave says, I have had the 20 millimeters for like four or five times now. Why, why did you keep selling it off? Just keep it, man, if you, if you use it so much. Brand says, since I purchased the 240 f2.8, I haven't used any other lens. That's amazing. I think 240 is such a great lens. If you are a professional photographer using micro four thirds, it is a default must have lens. That lens is crazy sharp and f2.8 is good enough for most situations if you're not dealing with extreme low light. If you're doing with a lot of low light, then I suggest going for prime lenses with f1.8 or f1.4. If you can afford it, then go for the f1.2 wide opening. But I think f1.8 is more sufficient. They are cheap, they are small. But if you're not dealing with low light in normal lighting conditions, 12 to 40 f2.8 is more than sufficient for like 99% of, of, of the shots, right? Exploring with Rotten Fish said, Hi Robin, hey, nice to see you here. Thanks for dropping by. From my experience with the Sigma 16 f1.7, sharpness at aperture f4. For Sigma 30 f1.4, sharpness aperture f2.8. But for Olympus 75, the sharpness almost all aperture. That is true. Olympus lenses, they are known to be already so sharp at wide open, you don't even need to stop down, right? That's the wonder of using micro four thirds system. Whereas if you use full frame or APS-C system, even if you shoot wide open f1.8, f1.4, you get shallow depth of field, but oftentimes you need to stop down a little bit to f2.8 to achieve the optimum sharpness. That's not the case for micro four thirds. You just shoot wide open, you get fantastic results. Santix, of course, I spoke to aunties nicely and politely, explained facts and they get it. Don't worry, I'm a nice person. Aww. <laughs> Eventually helped them after I made my official group shot, win-win. Yep, that's true. You gotta get your shot first before you get the aunties shots, right? The drunk wedding photographer says, finally got my EM1 Classic. Very happy with the color tone output. I think it's the D700 of Olympus. I think it's more than D700. I think the EM1, it is a very instrumental camera in history of mirrorless revolution. EM1 shows what a professional mirrorless camera is like. It is built like a tank, it is weather sealed, it has built-in electronic viewfinder, it has touch screen, it has 5S6 image stabilization, and it has room for improvement. I remember the original EM1 doesn't have live composite. It was through a firmware upgrade that Olympus added a live composite, silent shutter, they added more controls for video shooting, they improved the autofocus, they added buffer, they added, uh, what else did they add? Like the control for the volume or the, the indicator in the video. They added a lot of things through from my upgrade and that camera is like the blueprint that everyone else copies in the future of the mirrorless cameras, even from Sony, from Fuji, from everyone else, right? Olympus lead the way in terms of how to make a professional mirrorless camera. And that's, that starts with the EM1. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Uh, it says 12 to 100 f4. I don't have it, but if I go Olympus, it's my first choice. I think it's a fantastic lens. You should definitely go for it. Abam Robin. <laughs> hey, Ayman, how are you? Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> Ivan says, hello Robin, what is your opinion of the Zuko 75-300? I need a telephoto in this range of price. I think it's excellent. 75-300, uh, uh, small, compact, light, super rich, uh, not incredibly sharp at 300, but definitely sharp enough uh, for that price, cannot complain. Definitely, if budget is a concern, go for it. You will not regret it. 
Gossi says, despite the unfavorable reviews, I bought the 20 f1.4 to replace the 17 and 25 f1.8 and couldn't be happier. Using natural color profiles on EM5 Mark III, it produces amazing straight off camera JPEGs. Yes, I think the 20 f1.4 is a great lens. My only complaint with the lens is chromatic aberration. Like, I don't know what happened with Olympus. Like, generally they control chromatic aberration really well and that lens just goes all crazy right other than that i have no issue with that 20 f1.4 i think it's a fantastic lens thomas uh, thomas said hi robin from hungary Hey Thomas, thanks for being here. I'm using the Panasonic 42.5 f1.7 for indoor concert photos. What do you think about the Panasonic 35100 for the same job? May I entice you for the 75 f1.8 because they cost about the same? Hear me out. Like you have the 42.5 f1.7 already. 75 f1.8 would have been the perfect match or the lens to use alongside the 42.5. It is smaller than the 35100. It is brighter than the 35100. And 75 and 100 is not that far of a difference. You wouldn't miss not having 100 millimeters. And f2.8 versus f1.8, that 75 f1.8 is going to give you a lot more control over depth of field. It's going to allow you to shoot better in low light. It's definitely going to be a better lens. And because you're going to handle 42.5 and the 75 two lenses, so having a smaller lens is better. Unless you go for the Olympus 40 to 150 f2.8, I can't say anything because 150, that's double the reach of the 75, right? So of course, it's 40 to 150 is still a better lens, but 35100, may I swear you to the Olympus 75 f1.8. Frank Chess said, I turned 73, congratulations, wow. And I decided to trade my Holy Trinity of the Olympus Pro Zooms for the new F4 version, versions. Now when I'm hiking in the mountains, I can breathe again. Yeah, the F4 lenses are so much more compact and they are lighter, right? And for if you are doing a lot of hiking, if you're doing a lot of... Uh, physical activities, lighter camera system or lenses definitely is an advantage. Anthony says, Hi Robin. Hey Anthony. I know for street photography, the preferred camera that is small, discrete cameras like Pan F type. Uh, well, not necessarily. I still use cameras like uh, EM1 Mark II sometimes, EM5 Mark III, or I, th I personally think that EM10 is an underrated camera for street photography. I talk about this in one of my recent videos. I think EM10 is just perfect for street. Brand says, nice weather here in New York City. Go out and take some photographs. Ah, oh, my back starts to hurt. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna drink some coffee. We are about one hour into the stream already and we have about 128 people now. That's a lot of people. Rondofo said, Robin, what's your experience with mixing brand in micro four thirds, say using Panasonic lenses in Olympus bodies or vice versa? I currently have three Panasonic lenses with me and I use the Panasonic lenses very often. So I use this nine millimeters for my vlog uh, whenever I do vlogging and I think it's a fantastic lens. I use the Panasonic 15 f1.7 for my YouTube videos. So for my YouTube videos on my main channel, I only use two lenses, the 45 f1.8 for that talking headshot with nice blurry background. And of course the 15 f1.7 for everything else like close out of the products or B-rolls. And I also use the 15 f1.7 for my wide angle street photography. I just treat it like a 28 millimeters lens, although I know it is the equivalent of 30. But anyways, you know, it's close enough and I like that it's f1.7. And these Panasonic lenses, they work wonderfully on my Olympus cameras. I use it on my OM-1, I use it on my uh, EM-1 Mark II, EM-5 Mark III, no issue whatsoever. Autofocus is fast. Everything works just great. I shoot wildlife mostly, so any zoom super tele lens with short minimum focusing distance like 8400 from Nikon, 100 from Canon or... Well, if you want something similar, then I will suggest going for the... Yes, the Olympus 100 to 400 would, would have been a great lens, but it also would cost a lot more than say 75, 300. If you can afford the 100 to 400, it also allows you to attach teleconverters. So that opens up a lot of options and that 100 to 400 is also weather sealed. 
Go C says the 20 f1.4 and 40 to 150 f4 Pro make for an awesome travel combo. I'll eventually replace the 12 to 40 f2.8 with the 8 to 25 f4. This way, I get great coverage for travel. If you want to have like super wide to super telephoto, yes, then I think that makes a lot of sense. If not, I wouldn't trade away the 12 to 40 because that 12 to 40 f2.8 is such an excellent lens. It is like my must have for all my jobs i always carry this in my bag even if i don't use them and if i use them the shots that i get from this lens is just fantastic it's like amazing 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 right santik says people seeing me smiling and typing while watching you in an open air food court with earphones of course <laughs> hey be careful with your surroundings hey i don't know how safe it is in the food court that you are at Gossi says, a lot of love for the 25 f1.8. I miss that lens so much. I love that lens. Simon says, what is your opinion on Zuko 100 to 300? There's a Zuko 100 to 300? I'm not aware of that. I know there's a Panasonic 100 to 300, and I think it's an excellent lens. Uh, to choose between that and Olympus 75 to 300, doesn't matter. Both lenses are amazing. If you have one, just continue using it. Olivier says, hello to all Micro Four Thirds community. Hey, Olivier, thanks for dropping by. Nice seeing you here. Anthony says, where I live in Canada, it's too cold in the winter time. Take one glove off to operate the camera. I would love to see OM system bring out the OM1X model with a larger joystick and dials. Hopefully they do that. Travel Conspiracy says, is Sony 10 to 20 power zoom F4 deal breaker for low light? By the way, I have the crane... Uh, M2S and ZV E10, thinking of 10 to 20. I think if you are doing low light, you want to consider at least an f2.8 lens. And I would definitely push f1.8 or anything brighter if possible. f4 is not a deal breaker, you just have to push up your high ISO. And if you are doing photography i think it's still okay you can uh, use tripod and you know slow down the shutter speed not an issue but if you are shooting moving subjects if you're on the run then i think you, you gotta live with like iso 3200 iso city 400 that will be an issue but uh, other than that uh, i'll definitely push for f1.8 or, or brighter lenses for sure Clint says, hi Robin. Hey Clint, nice to see you here. Uh, hi from US Rocky Mountains. Hold my feet to the fire. I'll say the Lumix 15 f1.7 is my go-to. It is such a great lens. I did just get the Olympus 2100. It's a big bag of primes and sharp at all focal lens. Yes, yeah, it's sharp from 12 all the way to 100. It's such an excellent lens. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. How about Olympus 14 to 150 Mark II? I'm considering buying this lens. I think that is a good one lens solution uh, if you just want to bring one lens and nothing else. But you have to understand that whenever you have a lens with that kind of wide range of focal length from wide angle to telephoto, there will always be some compromise. So that lens is not particularly sharp at the longest end, 150. I think from 14 to say 50 is okay. Uh, zooming into 100, 150, you do have some compromise there and here. And, but, but then again, if you're not pistol peeping, if you just want one lens, if you want convenience, I think that is a great lens. Scott says, any chance you will do a video on post-processing? What software to use to collect and edit photo collections? Now, I don't organize my photographs using the software. The way I organize my photographs, I wouldn't recommend to anyone. <laughs> I group my photographs by months, and in each month, I group it by topic. Say, today I do street photography, I'll group it by location. Uh, it's not, not the most efficient way. Uh, the software that I use is Capture One Pro, and the only reason I use it over Lightroom, I tried Lightroom before many years ago, it is just so painfully slow. And every click or every slider that I get, it just refreshes on the photographs, just takes too much time. 
the Capture One Pro is just so much more efficient, so much faster. It consumes less resources on my computer, and somehow it optimizes the Olympus files a little bit better. The files from Olympus, when you open it up, the raw files with the Capture One Pro, it looks sharper. The noise reduction is a little bit better. The color is a little bit better. The, the way that the Capture One Pro optimizes the dynamic range in terms of highlight recovery, and if you want to push shadow details, it just looks somehow more natural and pleasing to my eyes compared to what Lightroom is doing. Not that you can't get the same results, you just have to work a little bit harder. And it's just so much slower. It's just so, so slow. Imagine if I had to spend like five to 10 seconds more on each photograph. If I were to edit like 1,000 photographs for a full wedding shoot, that's gonna take hours and hours more of work. And accumulatively, I'm gonna spend more days just editing and that's not fun. I always promote editing less and shooting more. So yeah, that's why I use Capture One Pro. Um, doing a video on post-processing, maybe not because I don't post-process a lot. Uh, I do very minim minimal post-processing. I just adjust the white balance a little bit, do a little bit of contrast. I straighten my photograph because when I shoot, I don't want to worry so much about straightening the photograph. I just want to capture the moment. So a lot of my photographs are a little bit crooked, crop the photograph a little bit and pretty much that's it. I don't do anything to the sharpness. I don't do anything to the uh, noise reduction. I just leave it to default. Rondolfo says, Robin, for landscape photography, manual focusing is desired, especially when using filters. Ah, uh, that's not true. That's not true. If you are doing landscape photography, if nothing moves, the autofocus will not fail. <laughs> if the autofocus fails, then you need to get a new camera. Anton Harefield says, my Olympus 17 f1.8 cannot compete with the 25 f1.8 in terms of overall clarity of image. Not sure why. Thanks also to Rob Track for helping with the EM10 Mark II. Two heroes in one place. And Rob is such a hero, right? I also personally think that the 25 f1.8 is a superior lens in comparison to the 17 f1.8. There is something wrong with the 17 f1.8's rendering. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's too much distortion correction. Maybe there's too much software correction. I just cannot put my finger on what's wrong with the lens rendering. There is something about the lens that doesn't look natural. It doesn't look like what my eye remembers seeing. The 25 f1.8 is a lot more pleasing, a lot more closer to what I see in reality in terms of rendering. And not so much of clarity, the 17 f1.8 is really sharp. Don't get me wrong, that lens is super sharp. It's just, there's something off with that lens. I just can't, I just can't explain. Marco for third server for frame says, uh, 25 f1.2 is my go-to for walk around setup. On a different note, I noticed that lenses I have are made in Japan are sharper than the ones not made in Japan. Anyone notice the same? No. Sharpness is the same whether it's made in Japan or not. Joe Preet is talking to Anton, maybe your 17 is defective? No. I have tried like at least 10 different 17mm lens, it's the same. Mm. Coffee is life. Terry says, recently I used 300 f4 Pro on my OM-1 for wildlife. Walk around will be 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro. Very good choices. I think that 300 f4 was once the sharpest lens for Olympus. They were so proud of that. It's like the biggest accomplishment, right? And yes, the 12 to 40 Pro is an excellent, excellent lens. Santi says, speaking of autofocus, if you notice autofocus uh, focus wrongly, do you override by turning focus ring or confirm by focus speaking to get a shot? I never had some issues with autofocus. Hey, so if the focus doesn't focus the way I want, it just refocus and it just goes to where I want it to be. The only issue that I have is with the OM1, but that's a different kind of problem that I'm not going to get into. <laughs> this is just going to open up different kind of worms. But uh, all the other cameras that I've used from Olympus so far, the EM1 Mark II, even original EM1, EM5 Mark III, autofocus is pretty much, it gets to where I want. Anthony says, where I live in Canada, the normal winter temperature is minus 15 degrees Celsius in January and February. It's not uncommon to get as cold as minus 25 degrees Celsius. Without the wind chill, it is as cold as minus 40. That is insane. <laughs> yeah, I think um, Mati Sulanto from Finland, he gets pretty much the same temperature. That's why he comes to Malaysia very often. 
JAQ Photography says, 17 f1.8 is such a gem, so compact and great for travel. It is really small, really light, very well built. It's just the rendering of the image. There's just something off with that lens. Bironzilla says, I still use that lens. I got a used one with an adapter for $600. It's the most used for thirds lens, but the size is a problem. Uh, it's a funeral and comic con in Quebec. They were a lifesaver. Yep. Alex Huyen said, hey, good to see you live. Hey, Alex, happy to be live. Good to be seen. And thanks for being here, Alex. Henry says, 2-100 is one of the best travel lenses. I wouldn't say it's the best travel lenses. I would say it's a very good lens just because 2-100 is not exactly the most compact lens for micro four thirds. Bironzilla says, I got the 35 and 50 for macro in four thirds. Ah, okay. I remember the 50 is not really a true macro lens because it's more like a half magnification whereas the 35 is a true one-to-one -one macro lens. Both are great lenses though. Brion Zilla says, Do you think I uh, should upgrade to a new version? Should I consider 45 f1.7? I think 45 f1.7 I think it's a 42.5 f1.7 for Panasonic and the Olympus is the 45 f1.8. Upgrading to these lenses, if you use it on micro photos body, will give you superior autofocus, no questions asked. James Sans Senior says, I bought the 25 f1.8 to take for street photography on the way to university. It can fit in my school bag, well, even on my EM1 Mark III. That is true. A lot of people didn't consider lenses, right? They said, oh, you know, like, I just need a small camera. But once they attach big lenses, <clears throat> say if you're using a full-frame camera with super large lenses, then it's not so compact anymore. That's the beauty of micro four thirds, right? You can have small lenses on uh, small cameras, which keeps the combination really, really, really compact, right? And that's what we have been working with in this micro four thirds community. Lanfari asks, any tips for shooting with a uh, hot weather, uh, not weather sealed system in rain or dust? Use a plastic bag, like a plastic cover, right? Uh, something to, to shield the camera from the, the dust or rain. And don't change lens. Oh my goodness, don't change lens. I am Bone, a warrior survivor, asks or says, an hour late, but the Total 40 Pro is rarely never got not attached on my EM1 Mark II. Yeah, that is such an awesome lens, right? Yeah, I have my 240 Pro. I think it's such a great lens. It has constant f2.8 pro, uh, aperture, super sharp, even a wide open f2.8. Uh, cannot find any fault with this lens. The images it gives me is just fantastic all the time. Anthony says, none of the camera manufacturers make their cameras easy to operate in extreme cold weather, especially Sony cameras, and the touchpad on the Canon R3 is no good when you have to wear gloves. That is true. A lot of the buttons are just too small, too tiny, and the dials and everything is just so hard to press and get to, right? There's going to be a problem operating the cameras in cold temperatures. And Pio says, hello to everyone. Hey! Thanks for dropping by. James Lee says, just got an EM10 Mark IV with kit lens. What should my next lens be for learning photography? It all depends on what you want to learn. If you want to learn about macro photography, then get a macro lens. If you want to learn about birding photography, then get a super telephoto lens, enough reach to, to get the bird or wildlife, right? If you want to do a portrait photography, then get lenses that can shoot portraits or render a shallow depth of field like 45 f1.8 or 75 f1.8. If you want to learn landscape photography, then get a wide-angle lens like the 9 to 18 lens. So it all depends on what you want to learn, then you customize your lens choices towards that preference. There's no right and wrong, and it's very hard for me to give you recommendations without knowing you in person and the type of photography or your preferences uh, when it comes to your photography. Nicole says, my 12 to 45 f4 pro is maybe my favorite i can shoot landscape portraits and almost macro with this lens it's mainly on my em5 i think 12 to 45 is also a fantastic lens santik says my guess the person who had the 20 multiple times is probably the focusing slow and hunts the field of view is good just more realistic eye field of view yeah i there's no question that the 20 f1.7 is a great lens. It's super sharp. Image quality is excellent. It's just that autofocus is just, oh, I, I, I cannot. Like, if I miss shots, I get anxiety. I get anxious. It's just, 
I, I cannot work with that anxiety with me. <laughs> Alex says, my Olympus 25 f1.8 is just pin sharp lens. It makes shooting every day super fun. Not just it's sharp, it's so small, so compact, and the rendering of the bokeh is just beautiful. I think it's an excellent, excellent lens. Andrew is talking to Anthony. Nothing that requires dexterity is designed for easy use with gloves on. I don't think you can reasonably single out cameras. That is true. It's not just cameras, right? Anthony says, I would like to see a dial and joystick made bigger on the next OM-1 Mark II, or I think it would be easier just to introduce an all-new OM-1 X for those of us who need to wear gloves when using it. Hopefully, they listen to you. Costellos say, Hi, Robin. Hey. Ever thought of a 5D or 6D comparison? Why? Why would I want to compare 5D to 6D? The only reason I got the Canon 5D was because, first of all, it's very cheap. I found it in the used market, and I've always wondered, if I started with a Canon full frame instead of Olympus, what would it be, right? So I don't have to wonder anymore because now after so many years, like 17, 18 years later, it's so cheap, I can afford it now. And yeah, I thought that it's a great camera. Like there's no reason for me to get a 6D. Like any of my cameras now can perform better or as well as a 6D, right? So in terms of autofocus, in terms of image quality, like there's no reason for me to get a 6D. Patrick says, Hey Robin, what are your thoughts on the Panasonic 42.5 f1.7 versus the Olympus 45 f1.8? Worth the extra money. I haven't used the Panasonic 42.5, uh, honestly. I've used it, not to say I haven't used, I have not used it extensively to give a fair comment. Whereas the Olympus 45 f1.8 is my bread and butter lens. Like I use it for every single job alongside like total 40. Sometimes I don't even use the total 40 if I don't need the lens. But the 42.5, sorry, the 45 f1.8 is my main lens. And the 45 f1.8 Olympus is also the lens that you see I use in every single one of my YouTube videos. Whenever I have a talking head, I always talk to the 45 f1.8, I get the nice blurry background. So I use the 45 f1.8 for my YouTube videos, I use it for my jobs, I use it to shoot on my streets, all the stranger portraits. Uh, I, it's just a fantastic lens. It's just so hard to find any issue with that lens. It's just a fantastic lens. La Vida Loca said, lens for a video or photo title not clear. Why not both? Why does the title need to be clear? Everyone is different. So if I were to ask you, what is your must-have lens? You answer it any way you want. Why do you want other people to clarify the question for you? You are the one to answer the question for yourself, not for anyone else. <laughs> Gordon says, Hi Robin, I would say that the Panasonic 15 is my favorite for micro photo. It might be fun. Uh, might be the 9mm if I had it. All the best from West Coast of Canada. I have both, 15 and 9. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And both are great lenses. Sixters Backmaster said, to, uh, hey Robin, loving my OM-1 more and more as I slowly figure out how to refine the autofocus settings, but also eyeing the G9 Mark II. Favorite lens is 12 to 100 f4, and second favorite is 75. Here's the thing, right? When I get a camera, I expect the autofocus to just work. Why would I need to refine the setting? It does not make any sense to me. And the fact that I get so much failures out of it is just... I don't know, I just cannot explain it. Santik says, perhaps maybe a 38mm full frame lens terms is my actual eyes field of view, but there won't be a 19mm micro four thirds lens. There is a 19mm micro four thirds lens. Search Sigma 19 f2.8. <laughs> you can thank me later, Santix. Daniel Tilly says the Panasonic G9 with the 12 to 60 kit lens was selling for only $900 yesterday for Prime Day. Anyone pick it up? I think these days people will just go for the G9 Mark II because of the face detection autofocus. Right. Anthony says, I think people who use cameras in warmer climates and who design cameras that tend to live in warmer climates forgot those of us who live in Northern Canada and Northern Europe. That is not true, Anthony. Camera manufacturers are mostly Japanese, right? Canon, Nikon, Sony, Olympus. 
uh, they are all Japanese companies, even Panasonic. And in Japan, it gets really, really cold. I remember I went to Hokkaido, it goes down to minus 10, minus 15, and I was also wearing gloves, and I also faced the same kind of problems that you have. So it's just strange that not maybe when they designed a camera, they didn't think about gloves, of course, but I don't know, I don't know. But I also remember that there are specialized gloves that allows you to operate easier. I don't know, I wouldn't know, hey, because I don't need gloves where I live. But to say that uh, when they design a camera, uh, they're designing it for a warmer climate, well, in Japan, it gets really, really cold. Rondofo says, after seeing the recent release of depth of field editing in Adobe Lightroom, I wonder if at one point we will be able to apply a digital shallow depth of field in camera. That will be well. I'm sure one day we will be able to do that. Like these days, I understand that the implementation of the fake bokeh in smartphones is not perfect, especially if you have hair and everything or certain edges, like it's not smart enough. But in the future, with advancement of technology, with improvement or increase in processing power, of course, with the help of AI, I'm sure this fake bokeh or the rendering of shallow depth of field is going to be possible to be added digitally, right? La Vida Loca said, uh, I shoot on Zcam with uh, anamorphic Siri. Oh, interesting. Bertrand Chalu said, Hi Robin, thanks very much for all your videos. You're most welcome. Very happy to make them. Just jump ship from Nikon after 15 years. Picked up an OM1 and the 2 40 Mark II and the 40 150 next on the list. 360 macro and onwards. Wow, that is a collection of lenses. Well, Bertrand, welcome to Micro Four Thirds World. Uh, and I'm glad you enjoyed my content. Keep on shooting, man. Sixtus Backmesser said, uh, Robin, Olympus guy at Reason B and H show in New York City told me that 20 millimeters chromatic aberration problem solved by Lens software update. Wonder if that is true. <laughs> no, that is not true. There's no amount of software correction that can correct that kind of chromatic aberration. Like if you have seen how bad it is, how spectacular it is, just no amount of software can correct that. J A Almas are. Almarza says, very, very happy with the Panasonic 15 on my GM5. The camera have a good autofocus lens correction. Auto lens correction. Yeah, the 15 millimeters was originally paired or launched together with the GM1. So you having the GM5, which is like almost the same size as the GM1, that 15, the size just fits on that GM5 or the GM1 perfectly. I think it's a great pair. Marco, hey, how are you? Good to see you here. Thanks for dropping by, man. Jari says, I must have a macro lens. Currently, it's the M Zuko 30 f3.5. I also need lenses with long focal length. Then go for the 60 f2.8. It's not expensive and it's an excellent, excellent lens. Brian says, I wish Tokina reintroduced 300 f6.3 Dio trick lens with autofocus as they already have electronics on that lens already. Donut bokeh is very interesting. <laughs> if there is enough demand, I'm sure they are going to do it. Anthony says, OM1 X with 24 megapixel stack sensor and new processor with larger operating dials. Yeah. Why stop at 24? Go for 33, 35, right? We need more now. James Lee says, just got the EM10 Mark IV. What lens should I pick up to complement the kit lens? I answered you this already, James. So if you have uh, not heard it, what I said before, like I can't answer your question because I don't know what you do. And it all depends on what kind of photography that you want to do, right? So Blaine Winfall says, for me, the Olympus 40-150 f2.8 Pro. It's both my go-to for wildlife and portraits. See, I like the zoom range, versatility, and ability to get subject separation in both cases. I think the 40 to 150 is such a, an underrated lens. The bokeh is just beautiful, and it's for what it is, you know, it reaches to 300 equivalent. It's such a small lens, and the sharpness is just incredible. And Trigal says, hello from Washington, D.C. Hey, Intrig, thanks for dropping by. Nice to see you here. Exploring with Rotten Fish said, uh, Anton Harifel, you, you refer, you are replying to Anton. Your Olympus 70 f1.8, the best sharpness range is f2.8 to f5.6. Try it. It's not about sharpness, man. 
even at f1.8, it's already very sharp. It's just there's something off with the rendering. The lens just looks, the images coming out from that lens just looks wrong somehow. Gully Dunn says, I have two must have lenses Canon R50 f1.2L and 28 to 70 f2L. Got some of my favorite photos of our children with those two priceless moments. Wow, those are really expensive lenses, man. Quite frankly, a podcast without Howard Stern says, the 75 f1.8 is actually my favorite lens. It is also mine. <laughs> Daryl says, pick up the Pan F. I have been ignoring my EM10 Mark III. Aww. <laughs> well, the Pan F does look sexy, so I understand why. Adrian Pulu says, Olympus 8mm and Olympus 300 ones. Apart from that, I don't need anything else, even if I have all focal range. 8mm is fish eye, right? And well, if you can live with the barrel distortion, why not? Nighthawk86 says, You can pry my 1200 Pro from my cold dead hands. <laughs> Gonna drink some water. Time check. We are one and a half hours in the stream and we have 132 viewers now. There's a lot of you. Just want to give a shout out to uh, YL Camera in case you guys missed my announcement earlier, which I started talking during the start of the stream. YL Camera, or uh, they are the largest camera retailer in Malaysia, they have this YL Photo Fair 2023, which is happening at PJ33 or Jaya33. Uh, all the camera brands are there. You have Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Sony, Hasselblad. Uh, you have uh, OM Digital Solutions. You have Panasonic. You have Sigma. You also have accessories from Sirui. You have uh, Profoto. You have Manfrotto. You have everyone. Everything is there. Even lighting system, accessories, whatever you want is there. And they have like workshops, classes, sharing sessions. They also have provide uh, sensor cleaning services. Like if you bring your cameras to them, they can clean it for you for free. So do check them out. Give them a chance. I have been there today earlier with my friends, John and Andrew. Uh, I bought myself a new camera bag. Um, I met, met up with a lot of awesome people and i'll go there again this sunday afternoon so if you are there in the sunday afternoon and if you see me do come and say hi don't be shy i would love to see you in person i think this is like a place where all the photographers just come together meet up and they also have all these latest cameras right like the uh, nikon zf is there panasonic g9 mark ii is also there all the new panasonic lenses the latest 100 to 400 and uh 12 to 35 well, no, th 35 to 100 Mark II with the Leica branding is also there. Uh, I remember the Fuji GFX 100 Mark II is there. I also saw the latest cameras from Sony, the A7C Mark II and it's A7 CR and all the latest and greatest new lenses from Sony, from uh, Canon, from uh, Nikon, the Plana 135 F1.8 is also there. Uh, a lot of things to check out, a lot of fun activities, a lot of things to learn, a lot of things to do. So definitely worth checking out. So if you are in Kuala Lumpur, if you are free these few days until this Sunday, uh, shopping more hours from 10 to 9, do go to Jet 33 check out the YL Fair. Not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> I am just doing this because like, hey, you know, it's, we don't get to have this kind of events a lot, right? It's a nice place to, to catch up with other photographers, meet people, and it's really fun. All right, uh, Wayne says, what do you think about Olympus 40-150 f4? I did a review for that lens, so do check out my review if you have not done so. I think it's a fantastic lens. It's very small, very light, super sharp. I think it's a fantastic lens. Aura says, which budget, no macro lens, and flash for starting macro photo with distance ring do you recommend? Uh, flash... So many third-party flashes, you can go for Yongno, you can go for Godox, no issue whatsoever. If you want a, an extension uh, ring or what do you call it? Extension tubes. You can look for Miki or Mikey, M-E-I-K-E. -E. I talk about this in my YouTube channel. Search for extension ring or extension tube or a budget macro or just type macro. It will come up. You can attach it to any any 
lenses, even kit lenses like the 14-42 or 12-32, 40-150R, all the budget lenses, and you can get close-up shots, really great magnification. That's a great place to start. Anthony says, my next lens is 300 f4 for wildlife to photography and landscapes. That is a great lens. The 25 f1.8 has been tested as being much sharper than 17 f1.8, but the letter still does a great job. That is true. 25 f1.8 is just a superior lens. No questions asked. Santi says, Capture One faster than OM Workspace. Yes, like 100 times faster. As of now, I'm using OM Workspace and really slow. Yes, I know, right? It's like... I don't know why they just don't hire someone else to just revamp the software. What clarity and sharpness settings do you recommend for micro four thirds raw files? Everything default. When I use the, uh, that time was Olympus workspace, I never touch the sharpness settings. I never touch the clarity settings. Same as now I'm using the Capture One Pro, I just leave the sharpness settings and clarity settings to default zero. I tweak the color, I tweak the white balance, especially correct the color for skin tone, especially if I deal with a lot of LED lights in uh, low light conditions or in artificial lighting. Uh, play with the color a lot, I play with contrast, I recover highlights and shadow details for a more balanced image, but I never, never touch the sharpness setting. Right, quite friendly, a podcast about Howard Stern says, lots of love, for the 50 to 200 f 2.8 to 3.5 non SWD lens with the 1.4 converter. It is a great lens. It is a great lens, but it's also a very old lens. If you attach it to a uh, micro four thirds camera, it's going to be a little bit slow. Truth Seeker says between 12 f2 and 15 1.7, which is better? It's like comparing apples to cats. They are both different lenses. You're comparing a 24 millimeters equivalent to a 30 millimeters equivalent it's like i i can't both lenses are used for different scenarios right let's say let's say that you need an ultra wide angle lens to cover as much as possible obviously the 12 is going to win right let's say that you need you don't need that wide and you are going to shoot something with you need a little bit more distance to work with obviously the 15 f 7 is a better lens so use these are I don't know, I, this, this is not a fair comparison, right? La Vida Loca said, too many lens options, just follow your feeling. Yes, get the lenses that work for you, right? You don't need to own all lenses. Just get the lens that suits your need and the kind of photography that you do. Rebirth2526 says, night coffee, of course. Coffee, all day long. Hmm. <laughs> Abrasive Web says, my favorite lens, 50. Else 24 to 35 for a walk around. I know, right? 50 is just like my must have as well. Rodolfo Romero said, Robin, not sure what computer you have, but I have no slowness with Adobe Lightroom with the MacBook Pro 2018 model. The latest features of Lightroom for masking are incredible. The thing is that you don't feel that it's slow until you use other softwares. Like, even if it's just half a second slower, like that little bit slower, like every time you, you push, it adds up, all right? And I don't use Mac. Quite frankly, a podcast about Howard Stern says, Olympus 12 F2 was my favorite for shooting video. Tremendous results, yes. I used to use that a lot as well. Uh, that was my go-to lens. And then I found this uh, Panasonic 9 f1.7 just because I do a lot of this like um, you know like how I hold this camera like that this kind of vlogging style and you know when holding it like that uh, having that 9 millimeters width versus uh, 12 that little bit of width makes all the difference like seriously 12 has become a little bit too tight especially if I turn on the digital stabilization other than that if I don't need to do that kind of vlogging, I think the 12 is a fantastic lens. Videogram says, hi, saw you in PJ33. Hey, did you come and say hi? I can't remember you. <laughs> Nicole says, what do you think of the new ad blur and bokeh effects using lens blur option in the latest Lightroom? I don't have Lightroom, sorry. GT says, any lens 35 to 40 is a must have. Panasonic 20 and 15 are my go-to lenses. I think 15 is a great lens. I use it a lot more for my street photography these days. 
Rondo 4 says, Robin, what's the difference between Toto 40 f2.8 and the Mark II version? It's the coating. So there is a newer zero coating, which will handle uh, bad light situation or strong source of light when you shoot shooting against the light. And that coating will prevent flare and haze and ghosting a lot more efficiently. That is the, the only difference. Nighthawk86 says, I wish there was an OM1 variant with light up buttons for astrophotography. That's true, hey. I think um, backlit buttons for camera is a must have feature because I shoot a lot in low light and it's frustrating when I can't see the buttons. It is fine if I'm just shooting with my main camera, say the EM1 Mark II, because I know all the buttons by heart. I, I can just operate the camera blind. But here's the thing. I'm a camera reviewer, right? So I deal with different cameras all the time. Say that now I have a Panasonic G9 Mark II and I'm shooting it in dark and I can't find the buttons. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Marco says, Robin, do you ever do anything special to clean the front and back elements of your lenses? No, I just use a microfiber cloth. I, I should consider doing something special, right? Yeah. Captain Nemo says, Rockinon 135 f2, no other lens comes close to rendering a sharpness within the usable focal length. Well, try 150 f2 from Zuko Digital DSLR time, super high grade lens. I think that Zuko lens will blow the Rockinon out of water, plus autofocus. Hmm, think about that. Malem says 25 f1.2 Pro, baby. Yeah, that is a great lens. And that bokeh is amazing. Dennis Dimenez says it's a 45 f1.2 worth the big price difference versus the 45 f1.8. Yes. Depends on what you do. Um, it's not so much of just f1.2 versus f1.8, but you gain a few other things. Number one, you gain weather sealing. 45 f1.8. Unfortunately, it's not weather sealed. Number two, you get that very nice feathered bokeh. It's just so beautiful, which the f1.8 doesn't have. And that optically, that 45 f1.2 is just superior in terms of sharpness, technical flow control. It's just on a different level. It's a pro lens, so it's not fair to compare pro lens against a non-pro lens. Andrew says, Robin, I disagree that a wide angle is ideal for a landscape. Often it's the wrong choice as people try to cram so much into a shot. The job of a photographer is to simply... Uh, the sentence is not complete. Well, I'm not saying that wide angle is the only lens you use for landscape. I'm just giving an example, right? Say if you are doing a macro photography, obviously you need a macro lens. If you are doing, say, Milky Way, you just need a wide angle lens. There's no way around it. I, I'm, I'm sure you're going to argue or some people are going to argue that, you know, if you're going to shoot planets, you're going to use a long lens. Yeah, but, you know... I'm just giving an example. You get the lens that is right for the kind of photography that you do. Say if you're shooting birds, you're going to use a telephoto lens, right? And some people argue, but what if the bird is just in front of me? I can just shoot with a 45 f1.8. Then use 45 f1.8. And it's hard for me to recommend a lens for someone asking me, hey, Robin, what's the next lens for me? I just bought a camera. Like, I don't know you. You know, I don't know what you're doing. And, and the worst thing is sometimes that person he or she doesn't even know what they're doing. Like they don't even know what kind of photography they're doing. So until you know yourself, until you explore further, until you shoot more, until you explore more in your photography, until you understand yourself better, sometimes it's hard for me to recommend you a lens, right? That's just the truth. It's not like, oh, you know, if you're doing a, a landscape, you must have a wine. That's, that's not the point. Rebirth2526 says, uh, 14 f2.5 or 20 f1.7 should have an update version where they fix issues on those lenses. I agree. Those lenses have some issues, especially autofocus, not the fastest of all micro thirds lenses. Marvin Art says, I'm thinking to buy an f4 lens. Is it better to buy a 12 f4 or a 40-150 f4 for the EM1 Mark III? Those are very different lenses. <laughs> My goodness, like, it's like comparing apples to, to oranges, right? One is a telephoto zoom lens, one is an all-round lens. And usually people will buy these two lenses to complement each other. Thomas says, Hi Robin, for me it's the 40-150 f2.8. It's a must-have because of its flexibility. You can add teleconverters and it has outstanding optical performance. That is true. 
I agree with you, 40 150 is such a versatile lens. Optically, it's amazing, and you can add teleconverter. So, yeah, if you need that range, if you are shooting with telephoto, that is a must-have lens. Andrew says uh, the Valeret photography gloves are exceptionally good. Yep, thanks for the re recommendation. I wouldn't know any of these gloves. Sing Start Music says, uh, talking to Anthony, my Olympus OM cameras never failed me. Greetings from Norway. Good to know. Angelo, play for one. Hey, Angelo, how are you? Uh, I agree with you, Robin. Why does one need to change setting for something like AF to work? Why can't the manufacturer make the camera with the correct settings? Right! You should just turn on the camera and start shooting. Like, man, like these days, it's just... I, I don't understand. Quite frankly, a podcast about Howard Stern says... Uh, you're talking to Dennis the Menace. Both are fantastic and the Pro Lens is obviously superior, but I'm not sure it gives you much value for money considering how cheap you can find the F1.8 version for these days. That is true. I will always recommend people to start with the F1.8 lenses before you upgrade to the Pro Lens. If you are happy with the F1.8 lens, why bother upgrading, right? <laughs> Sometimes you could be already happy with what you have. Ivan says, I just purchased a used EM1 Mark III for a great price and condition, uh, but the shutter count is 80,000. Should I be concerned? No, don't worry so much about it. The shutter count, I think it lasts longer than the rating or whatever that is rated for its life cycle. You can go to like hundreds and thousands or even 1 million shutter count with no issue. Abisha says, Hi Robin, hey, how are you? Current use uh, OM5 and 245 for travel, 825 too heavy for OM5, planning to sell it, but not sure I will miss it later. Yeah, if you find that you don't use a lens enough, just sell it and buy other lenses which you will use. King Elki says, hi, Rob hi Robin from Japan, hey, how are you? Thanks for being here. Favorite lens is the 35 f1.4 Sony, 85 f1.8 and a Canon 40 f2.8. All amazing lenses. The classic 35 and 40 millimeters for normal view and the 85 f1.8 I think is a fantastic lens for portraits. It gives fantastic bokeh, right? Where were we? Singtat Music says, my 25 f1.2 has become a must-have. But I'm surprised by how much I use the 60 macro. Yeah, that macro lens is amazing. We're bringing it to a concert tonight. 60 is really versatile. All the best for the concert shoot, man. Con E says, hello from Korea. Wow, hi, how are you? The OM withdrew from the Korean market, I knew. I know about that. In 2021, we can't buy Olympus except uh, from Amazon or something, but I still love Olympus. I actually work with some uh, Korean, South Korean Olympus stuff before. I know them in person. Amazing people. I miss these people so, so much. We used to have meetings... If you don't know this, I worked for Olympus before, so we used to have meetings in Japan, so we get to meet people from Japan, from South Korea, from Hong Kong, from Australia, from Singapore, from all over the Asia-Pacific regions. Crown, Count Dracula says, which is better, 25 f1.8 or 25 f1.7? Are they similar? The only issue that you have to be aware of with the Panasonic uh, 25 is that it has focused breathing issues, meaning that as you... Uh, shoot wide open is fine but as you stop down to f2.8 f4 i think the focus will run away a little bit there and here <laughs> so yeah check out the focus breathing issue if you're okay with that then no problem the olympus 25 f1.8 sorry it's not focus breathing focus shift issue the olympus 25 f1.8 has no focus shifting whatsoever something says sigma f19 for micro four thirds yes and Trick says, uh, Panasonic 12 to 60 is my favorite lens. I've reviewed that lens before. I think it's a great lens. I, I just feel that it's. People keep saying that's amazing. I don't see how amazing it is. It's a good lens, don't get me wrong, but nothing out of the ordinary if you ask me. Michael says, Regards from Germany. Hey, thanks for dropping by, Michael. Robert Mills says, uh, Late to the party, got you on what? Got you on while I work. Nothing more relaxing than good camera chat. Ah, are you sure you're allowed to listen to like YouTube videos or watch YouTube videos while you work? Man, I hope not, I'm not getting anyone in trouble. Hey, Santi says, will there be a G9 Mark II during the YL photo fair? Yes, I saw the G9 Mark II uh, today. Uh, Santi, if you're going this Saturday, 
the Panasonic booth is a little bit behind. It's not on the main central area. You gotta go all the way to the back. It's a little bit hidden together with some other brands. So uh, if you don't see it immediately, don't worry, just walk a little bit further to the back. Yumi says, I have the Panasonic 14 F2.5 and 20 F1.7 pancakes using the 14 more because sometimes I need the wider lens in tight spaces. That's true. Uh, wider lens does help in tighter spaces. Yep, go and get the G9 Mark II. Marvin says, do you have a video on how do you clean lenses, specifically on the outside of the lens going inside the camera sensor? No, I don't have. I don't even know how to clean the lens properly. Robert Mills says, I have the Olympus 12 F2 arriving in mail today. Only a few stops away now. Oh, enjoy the lens, man. I think you'll, you'll, you'll find the lens really amazing. Burana, how are you? Good to see you again. Hi, Robin. 14-150 with EM5 Mark III. They are a good matchup. That is true. I agree. Michael says, yes, using the 300 F4 since four years, still very happy. It is a great lens if you need that reach for whatever reason, even if you are not doing wildlife, because a lot of people think about super telephoto lenses only for wildlife shooting, right? But there are other use cases, say you are shooting sports, or if you are using it for a concert, you are shooting for a long distance, for whatever reason, it is a great lens. Terry, good to see you here. I'm not a fan of the manual focusing clutch, which I think the Nikon approach is better where you can be in autofocus as soon as you turn on the focus ring, you are in manual focusing mode. No knocking the clutch accidentally. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I don't know which camera you're using now uh, for Olympus, but uh, you can disable the manual focusing clutch. There is a setting in the camera. I think it's quite hidden. You can just disable it completely. Hmm. Terry says, Talking of sharp lenses, I think 75 f1.8 is one of the best. I agree. That lens is crazy sharp. Pinnacle Pete says, Hi Robin, my favorite lens is the 40 150 f2.8 Pro. The constant bright f2.8 aperture, the great zoom range, and sharp wide to long. This lens is what stays on the body the most. You're not alone, Pinnacle. A lot of people here, if you read on the chat early on, I think there's at least 10 people saying that that 40 150 f2.8 Pro is their favorite lens. It is a popular lens as well. I think possibly one of the most popular lens. Raul says, for photo editing, can I recommend Dark Table? Great tool and completely free. Yeah, why not, guys? If you are n you don't intend to pay for a software, if you want to uh, stay on budget, then check out Dark Table. I think it has a good reputation. Uh, Pinnacle says, uh, but the 12 to 40 f2.8 and 45 f1.2 are just a hair behind. <laughs> yeah, these are great lenses as well. The 12 to 40 definitely is a must have, right? I think for if you are a pro photographer, you definitely need this in your camera bag. No excuse. I think it's just a great lens. And 45 f1.2. Um, I almost wanted to upgrade to 45 f1.2, but I'm so happy with the 45 f1.8. I see no reason to upgrade. And the fact that the 45 f1.8 is so tiny, so, so, so small. It's not with me here now. Oh wait, it is. Like, you know, 45 f1.8 is just so small, right? Like, I just see no reason to, to upgrade. Like, man, the results I get from this is just amazing. It's my bread and butter lens. Rondolfo is talking to Terry. When I started using lenses with manual focusing clutch, I had the same feeling. After getting used to it, I love it and find it useful. Yeah, it can be useful. If you find it useful, then continue using it. Having it enabled, no issue whatsoever. But if you find that it gets in the way because sometimes you put the lens in your bag and you move around and it just gets moved, right? The clutch gets pulled down accidentally and when you turn on the camera, it's manual focusing, it's annoying. You can choose to disable the manual focusing clutch. It's a choice. Who said you don't want all lenses? <laughs> well... Here's the thing. I am a minimalist person. I don't like hoarding stuff. Like, it irks me. So I only keep things that I need. So whatever that I don't need, I'll sell it off or I'll give it away to my friends. Uh, if you know my friends, they'll tell you I give away my lenses or cameras. No joke. I gave away my E1 Mark III. 
I've given away a, a 42.5 lens. I've given away a 25 f1.7 lens. I've given away uh, a Panasonic GM5 camera body. No joke. Maurice Samuel Virtual Tour says, Hey Robin, hey, thanks for dropping by. I just wanted to know your opinion on how to calibrate your EVF to what you see in real life. Uh, focus first, like whatever lens you have focus. And then, uh, are you talking about the depth setting? If you're talking about depth setting, I'll just turn until I see everything is sharp. Other than that, I don't do any other calibration. Right. Peter says, uh, not to cron. Oh, ha, yeah, that is a great lens. That is a great lens. However, though, like, I understand that there are certain characteristics to that not to cron 42.5 f1.2 that you don't get with Olympus lenses. I wish that not to cron is weather sealed. If it is weather sealed, then I'll highly recommend it over the Olympus versions just because it is not weather sealed. You know, like when, when my friends asked me, I'll just push the Olympus 42.5 because that Olympus 42, uh, 45 f1.2 is sharper. Don't get me wrong. It's just that that Nauticron 42.5, the rendering is quite pleasing. Just, it is not weather sealed. Why Panasonic? Why? Hey, David, how are you? <laughs> have you ever fixed a scratch lens? No, I have not scratched my lens before. So I've not fixed any scratch lens. Yerla says, uh, Voigtlander Nocton 25 f0.95, perfect focal length, legendary wide aperture, and amazing solid controls and build quality. The lens got me into manual focus. Now, yeah. it's just too much work. No autofocus, no go. Alan, hey, how are you? <laughs> Alan is a fellow friend from Kuching. He's a wedding photographer. Uh, we always catch up for Kolomi and gossips whenever I'm back in Kuching. Can't wait to see him again. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, been busy lately. We should catch up sometime soon if you come to KL or if I go back to Kuching. Rondo 4 says, uh, EMR Mark III is rated for 400,000 actuations. It can go a lot further than that. The 400,000 is just a number. Trust me. Jabbar says, Hi Robin. Hey, how are you? Your videos inspired me to take up photography. Thanks for letting me know. I'm glad you are taking out photography. I just want to say thank you. Your enthusiasm is contagious. I'm not enjoying capturing life as it happens. I enjoy the 25 f1.8. Oh, uh, that means a lot to me that you tell me that uh, you're inspired to do photography yourself. Keep that shutter clicking and that 25 f1.8, if you have missed the earlier chats, there's like 20 people that says the 25 f1.8 is their favorite lens. Robert says, I'm the boss. <laughs> oh man, you're setting a bad example. Hey, now that your staff is going to watch YouTube videos as they, um, as they do their work. Uh, NOP says, I got a secondhand series 35 f1.8 anamorphic lens for my EM5 Mark III and I'm totally amazed with the results. Although it's a pretty heavy lens, any tips for anamorph photography? No, I don't use these lenses because they don't have autofocus. No autofocus, no go for Robin. Uh, Robert Mills said, lots of love for the 40 f2.8. True, a lot of people here love it. It has to be one of my favorite lenses too. Has anyone mentioned the 8-25? to uh, This lens is getting a lot of hours on my cameras at the moment. I sorted it off immediately when this Panasonic uh, 9 f1.7 came out. And I understand it's not fair to compare because the Olympus f... Uh, 8 to 25 f4 is a zoom lens and it zooms all the way to 25 and it's wider at eight millimeters and it's a pro lens whereas this panasonic is not a pro lens but you gotta admit this panasonic is so much smaller so much lighter it costs half of what the, the olympus 8 to 25 is asking for and this is f1.7 like man it's, to me this is just a better lens Baris Tan Dongan says the Lumix 14 f2.5 is a must have for street. I don't like that it's so plasticky but it's so light. I can't complain. Fast LF good image. I didn't get the Leica 15. My issue with the Panasonic uh, 14 is that it has some chromatic aberration issues. And uh, autofocus is not, it's not the fastest. It is not slow, don't get me wrong. But if you compare with the Panasonic 15 or any other, say, the Olympus 17, 25, autofocus is just not as fast. Uh, 
Santik says, 45 f1.8 is awesome, but uh, small house and small hall only allow me to use it for only a few shots. Start with the 20 most of the time. I use the 45 for product shots. I use it for people shots, for portraits to get that nice blurry background. I use it for uh, a lot of event photography, stage photography, when I can get close enough. Sometimes I don't even need a 75. I can get away with 45. Arman says, Ditto for 45 f1.8, favorite micro four thirds lens. I know, right? So small, so light, so sharp, beautiful bokeh. So much to like about this lens. Like, very little to complain, if there's nothing to complain at all. David says, you should do a drawing to give away camera gear. Nah, I give it to my friends, people who deserve them. I have a lot of friends. <laughs> Santik says, I wish to have all of my Olympus lenses, like a collection, just like the brochure. Ah, that's a dream, right? But, but the thing again, like, I also feel that it's wrong to just collect for the sake of collecting. Like, if you don't use something, sell it off or give it to someone who deserves it, right? Like a student who's learning photography. Maurice says... Uh, Robin, I wanted to clarify a color calibrate EVF. Oh, no, no, no. I think the EVF on Olympus cameras are... The colors are quite accurate. Are you using Olympus cameras or some other cameras? I have no issue with the colors from the EVF or LCD screen. How do you keep the lenses? Dry box. Get a dry box. John says, 35 anamorphic is nice. It is, but... No autofocus, no go, man. I just cannot work with manual focus. Oblique Gamer says, Sigma 85 is good for video and photos. Sigma 85? You, you, are you saying the 85 for full frame lens, full frame cameras? Yeah, A7 Mark IV. That's correct. I think 85 is like the standard lens for portrait, right? It is long enough to get that nice uh, perspective compression in the background to create shallow depth of field, but not too far that you, are, you have to stand so far away from the subject, you can still get close enough, and you don't have to shout when you uh, give uh, directions to your, to your portraits. Rondolfo says, Robin, UV filter or not for protecting the lens? I personally don't like them as it's adding a cheaper glass in front of the lens. I prefer to use lens hood to protect them. I personally don't use UV filter, but I'm not against them. If you need it for protection, then by all means go for it. The only reason is that I do a lot of reviews for cameras and lenses. So if I have a UV filter attached, sometimes it causes, causes problems that I don't know without realizing it right maybe flare maybe some softness maybe some ghosting maybe some issues there and here and it's just not fair to to comment on sharpness or some issues with the camera or lens when i have something else that's causing the problem so i don't use uv filter whatsoever Dennis Dimanis says, Robin, what are your thoughts on the 75 to 300 f4.5 to 6.7? I think it's fantastic. It is cheap, it is compact, it is light. It gets you good results. No issue whatsoever. If you are on a budget, get the lens if you need the reach. Angelo Play for One says, Two lenses I like to have but cannot buy is the Panasonic 10 to 25 and the Panasonic 25 to 50. These are quite expensive for micro four thirds. I think that these lenses are over engineered. I think that they are too large. They are not practical. If I'm going to use something as big as that, I'll just use full frame. Like seriously, there's no point getting such huge, lens, huge and heavy lenses on a micro four thirds body. Like the reason I go for micro four thirds and the reason why I love micro four thirds so much is because the cameras are so small and the lenses are so tiny. I can get away with you know, these small and light lenses and yet they are very bright. And when the lenses get like, really large, really, really heavy, like those 10 to 25 and 25 to 50 Panasonic. It just defeats the purpose of micro four thirds and micro four thirds philosophy has just lost its footing somehow. Just just my honest thought. Klaus says, I glued my 300 F4 to my EM1X and <laughs> 19 millimeters macro to my OM1. Good choices. Faiz says, 1240 F2.8 on the OM Pro lens, very good lens, and a 25 f1.8. The 25 f1.8 is like the most popular lens now tonight. Hey, it's like the top, and then followed by the 40 to 150 f1 f2.8 Pro. 
time check. Wow, we are two hours into the stream and we still have 108 people viewing the stream. Amazing. I'm just going to drink a bit of water, keep myself hydrated. Just have to stay hydrated because I'm talking non-stop. <laughs> hmm. Man. Canal stays. Started photography with a Canon M50 M6, then RP, R now I landed at Olympus Pan F with 25 f1.8. Such a pretty camera, capable of street photography and portrait landscape as well. Welcome to the Micro Four Thirds world. Well, Pan F is such a pretty camera. I think the design is just retro, classic, and inspires you to go out and do photography. I think that's what cameras should do. Oblique Gamer says the camera gear is really required or not. Camera gear is required or not. I guess if you don't have a camera, how then do you take photographs? Roberto says, Robin, thank you so much. So many Olympus videos, not as popular in US and, and Puerto Rico, needed the input and reviews, much appreciated. No worries, Roberto. Thank you so much for being here and thanks for letting me know uh, that you appreciate my videos. I will definitely continue to do more and more Micro Four Thirds related videos. I will share tips and tricks on using the cameras, optimizing the cameras, and of course, uh, photography in general, right? Uh, to me, photography is more about using the camera. Photography is also about the photographer's vision, storytelling, capturing the moments, and of course, you yourself, uh, how to improve yourself as a photographer. So more content is definitely coming. And thanks for being here. And because of you guys watching that I can continue making more videos. Joey says, hey man, hey Joey, would it be worth upgrading my current MP5 today? Still in love with my 18 millimeters. 18? Are you talking about 17? I think EP5 is a great camera. If you still love it, no reason to upgrade it. Robert Mills says, for sure the Panin Laka 9 is a beauty. I'm very tempted to get hold of it for Astro. Hum and it goes at such a good price. Best value for money lens. Yes, it's definitely one of the lenses that when it came out, you thought that it would cost a lot more. And look at the price. Wow, it's really good price. <laughs> That's why I got one myself too. Yeah, my 9 f 7 is here and I love it so much. I use it to shoot an entire vlog today. Uh, I'll share the video sometime next week. It's coming out really, really soon. Maurice says, Yes, Robin, I've been shooting for 35 years. That is a long time. Using many different cameras, started with Olympus, full circle back to Olympus. I feel it's the best camera system for me not going back. I also feel that Olympus suits my kind of photography. I move a lot, so I treasure the smaller size of the cameras and lenses. I can fit a lot with a small bag, and I really treasure the mobility. The more I move, the more different shots that I can get from my clients, and I I just like that because the cameras are so light, I don't have to break my back to get the kind of shots that I need. Lucio Marotta says, I like all round lenses like the 12 to 200. Yep, if you need to reach uh, all the way to 200, then go for it. It's just that like I rarely shoot all the way to 200. I even rarely use the 75 f1.8, which is an excellent lens when I need it. It gives me fantastic results. Like I use 45 f1.8 most of the time. So when you don't need it, then I feel that that's an overkill, right? David Crook says, when I started photography in the film days, 135 was the portrait lens. Such a great lens, right? That's why now um, Nikon is causing such a stir with their planar uh, 135 f1.8. Stefan says, what is the perfect compact pocketable camera for you? I will go for the GM1 or Olympus Pen EPM1. Or if you can find a GM5 or the EPM2, I think any of these small cameras are great. Pair with pancake lenses, say the 14 f2.5 or 20 f1.7 or smallish lenses like the 15 f1.7. Any of the small lenses or even zoom, uh, kit zoom lenses, right? Like the 13 32 or the Olympus 14 42. Any of these lenses would be great. For the resonance said, hello, hey, how are you? Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> Yellow says, have you ever adapted Four Thirds DSLR lenses onto micro Four Thirds cameras, like the 1454? Yes, I have. What would you like to know? Santik says, hmm, why is the underrated lens from this life so far? Underrated. 
I'll say 25 from 8 right? This is such an underrated lens. But it's a popular lens, so it can't be underrated. What am I talking about? I agree about the heavy lens point. I switched to micro four thirds from full frame after watching your videos for many years. Now I understand why you are smiling all the time. <laughs> yes, it's, it's liberating, right? Not carrying heavy gear. And yet you get the results that is good enough. I'm not saying that micro four thirds is better than full frame. I've never claimed that. Of course, full frame will have some advantages when it comes to resolution, when it comes to dynamic range, when it comes to high ISO shooting. I'm not denying that, but I'm also saying that micro four thirds, you know, like most of the cameras and lenses, they are good enough for what I do. I deliver my shots uh, to my clients. They are happy. I get paid. End of story, right? Sufficiency, we have hit a point where the cameras and lenses these days are just good enough for what we do. Photo Resonance says, I think about the standard zoom lens. What do you think about 2 to 45 versus 2 to 40 about sharpness and details? In terms of sharpness and details, they are very close. They are very, very close. Uh, you shouldn't use sharpness and details as the differentiating factor between these two lenses. You should think about whether you treasure compactness versus f2.8 aperture. If you shoot a lot in low light, then go for the 12 to 40. If you shoot, if you travel a lot, or if you just need something as small as possible, you want to minimize footprint, then 12 to 45. Faiz says, now using EPO 9 and 25 f1.8. Wow, 25 f1.8 is like the number one choice out there. Hey, Corey says, hi Robin. Hey, Corey. Nice to see you again. Thanks for dropping by. Paul says, hello Robin from the UK. Hey Paul, nice seeing you again. Enjoying this very much, thank you. Thanks for letting me know. I'm very happy to be here interacting with everyone. We are about two hours and 15 minutes into the stream. Yeah, I'm still going strong. Oblique Gamer says, best camera under 2005 for wedding. Wedding photography, well, depends on what you're doing. If any camera is good for wedding these days, you can go for Sony. Uh, a lot of the full frame options, you can go for Fuji. Uh, some of my friends are using Fuji. Uh, Canon has been known, Canon and Nikon, have, they are known to be solid cameras for weddings in the industry. And I personally use Olympus cameras for weddings. So any camera is good for wedding, really. It's not so much of which camera for wedding, it's more on how you use it. And you know, like how, it's more of you as a photographer, your vision, that determines the outcome of your photography, right? Not so much of a camera. Robin Sheffer said, hi Robin. Hello Robin. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the 70 to 300 original four thirds lens on micro four thirds cameras? If you already have the lens, by all means continue using it. I think it's a great lens. The autofocus will be slower. But if you are considering on getting similar lens, I would still highly suggest micro four thirds lens. The 75 300, Olympus or the Panasonic 100 to 300, these lenses are not expensive. You're not paying too much more. They are still relatively on a good budget side. And autofocus, you appreciate autofocus is so much more efficient on micro four thirds natively. Oblique Gamer says, which is the best camera brand and why? There is no best camera brand. Every camera brand has their own strengths and weaknesses. It's up to you as a photographer to work around the weaknesses and optimize the camera's strengths. And uh, I personally choose micro four thirds because the cameras and lenses are a lot smaller. Uh, they don't, I don't have to break my back to use this camera system and these cameras are sufficient for the things that I do. Rohit Kumar says, Hi sir, I often get confused between 35 and 50. I have 50, but when I see many videos, I get confused. Should I continue using 50 because three years I've been using only 50. Then you have to ask yourself, do you like your 50 millimeters lens? Like the perspective that it gives you? Are you comfortable with framing your shots in the past three years that you've been shooting with 50? If you're not happy, why are you not happy? Is it too tight or is it not wide enough? Or, you know, there's like, you have to ask yourself these questions, right? Only you can answer yourself this. You can tell yourself whether you prefer a 35 or 50. If you have not tried a 35 before, I think Maybe you don't want to spend money on that lens. Maybe you can borrow the lens from your friend. I'm sure you have other photographer friends who use the cam same camera system with you. Then borrow the, friend, the lens from your friend and give it a try. Maybe a few weeks, 
do some street photography, do some portrait, and compare with the 50 that you have, see what kind of shots you can get from each lens, and then you decide for yourself which lens works better for you. Like, don't ask other people which is a better lens because everyone's different. Like, for me, I'm definitely a 50mm shooter. I can tell you, my friends will tell you that they prefer 35mm lens. David says, I've shot at 12,800 ISO on my Olympus and the software nowadays cleans it up. That is true. And even if I don't clean it up with my software, my clients never complain about my shots. And I'm perfectly happy with my shots that I get from the ISO 12,800 from my Olympus cameras. No issue whatsoever. Oblique Gamer says, what camera is used present? You mean what camera am I using presently? My main workhorse now is my Olympus uh, EM1 Mark II. This is a 2017, 2016 camera. I've been using this camera for the past six years. No issue whatsoever. It gives me the results that I want. Amazing, amazing camera. You pair with the right lens, you get amazing results. Terry says, Hi Robin, how do you rate the 25 f1.4? Mati seems to rate it. I have it, but see some purple fringing with my OM1. Uh, I would definitely prefer the Olympus 25 f1.8. If I don't, I understand that it's not fair to compare because it is brighter. So in some situations, that 25 f1.4 will definitely be advantageous. No comparison, right? You definitely, with the brighter aperture, you use lower eyes so you can get faster shutter speed, hence better results. Uh, but if uh, bright aperture is not a concern, optically, the Olympus 25 f1.8 is superior. Davis Cruz says, Robin is the happiest person on YouTube. <laughs> I'm happy because you guys are here. So David and everyone else, thanks for being here. Thanks for you know supporting my channel. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate you guys. You know, I always say it and I'm still gonna say it again. There's no Robin Wong without all of you here. Super Zero says, Leica F1.7 zooms are meant for the more serious filmmakers whose size is not an issue as exactly to eliminate the need to turn off full frame. That is not true. If they are targeting filmmakers, there are cinema lenses, right? They have cinema cameras. So the fact that it is a micro filter system, not really filmmakers, they are targeting hybrid shooters. Like, let's face it, Panasonic GH series cameras, they are not really cinema cameras. There are cinema, cinema great cameras out there from Sony, from Canon, from Red cameras, from Ari, Alexa, all this. These are serious cinema cameras. These are filmmakers tools. If you are filmmaking with micro filters, I'm not saying that you can't. Micro filters is an excellent tool for filmmaking and GH series cameras. There are a lot of uh, filmmakers using GH series cameras and they've won international awards, you know, documentary photographers or filmmakers. Once you make these cameras, these lenses, they are just micro filter cameras and, and lenses, right? They are not really made for filmmakers. Let's face it, that's the truth. Davey says, hello Robin. Hey, hey Dave, how are you? What do you think about the OM lenses? I need a special old look without editing. Thanks. You mean the film lenses? I've said this again, I'm going to re repeat it here. No autofocus. No go for Robin. <laughs> Oblique Gamer is looking for any Indians. So any Indians, say hi to Oblique Gamer. You guys can chat in Indian, I suppose. Yellow says, I've used the 4 thirds 70 to 300 and even on the EM1. The lens sticks a lot at the long end, right? Yeah, it hunts. And I would definitely say go for the newer micro four thirds version. That's why I say, not to say that these uh, four thirds lenses are bad. If you have the lens, use them. They are amazing, amazing lens. But if you don't have them, don't purposely look them out. Uh, if you are using micro filters camera, then go for micro filters lenses. What lens gives the best stabilization more on zoom lens or short zoom 200 of... Wow, this is a very confusing, very confusing question. I think these days, most of the image stabilization works inside the camera body. Uh, five axis image stabilization like the OM1 or Panasonic G9 Mark II, so no issue whatsoever. You can use whatever lens on the, these cameras. John, John says, great. I just took the, my camera out for sensor cleaning. I just realized both my eye caps are missing. Ha! Huh. Okay, what happened? You sent them for cleaning earlier and they took out your eye caps. What the hell? 
So I guess you have to return to um, the camera fair tomorrow or Saturday then to look for your eye caps. For a video? You mean which camera for a video? Okay. Norm says full frame to micro four thirds here. Favorite lenses 25, 75 primes, and 12 to 40 pro. A very workable setup for my event and street work. Micro Four Thirds is underappreciated. I think un Micro Four Thirds is more than sufficient for street, for professional work. Depending on what you do, like there are some very challenging situations. Like if your clients demand 100 megapixels, obviously Micro Four Thirds is not going to cut it. If your clients demand you to shoot in situations where you need ISO 12,800, 25,600 all the time, then maybe Micro Four Thirds is not the best system. But for 99% of other situations, it is more than good enough. And I'm a testament for that, right? I've been doing large festivals with it. I've shot uh, some clients, delivering shots from them, no issue whatsoever. They come back to me. If so definitely Micro Four Thirds is more than sufficient. <laughs> I'm gonna drink some water. We still have more than 100 viewers. We are about two, two and a half hours into the stream. Man. <laughs> oh. Still have some coffee left. I'm gonna drink some coffee. Mm. Sasha says, my favorite is 12 to 50 lens, 15, 15 millimeters cap, and 35 100 Lumix, and 45 200 Lumix. Wow, if you have 35 100 and 45 200, that's a little bit redundant, right? I'll just pick one. I'll maybe stay with 45 200. Roberto says, have you ever used vintage lenses with converters? No. I've said this many, 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 many times, and we're gonna repeat it again. No autofocus, no go for Robin. Like, please don't make me use manual focus lens. It's torturous, right? When I'm doing photography, there are a lot more important things I have to care about than manual focusing. Like, I want to think about the story I'm telling. I want to think about the idea. I want to think about the moment. I want to focus on my composition, the lighting. The last thing I want to think about is focus. So I'll just leave it to the camera, so no autofocus. No go. <laughs> Andrew says, lost my EMR Mark II eye cup ages ago. Too expensive to replace. There are third party options though. You might want to look it up. Angelo Play for One says, do you think for wildlife photographers, OM system needs to make a 75300 Pro and a 10400 Pro cheaper than 150-400? Well, the thing is, I think more Telephoto lenses are coming according to rumors. Like I know these are rumors and I should not be indulging in rumors, but if the rumors are true, we are gonna see some options from OM Digital Solutions very soon, right? Uh, telephoto lenses, and that will be really exciting. Oriel says, which lens for drunken photo shooting? But seriously, which one are weather sealed? Drunken photo shooting? Which ones are weather sealed? There are a lot of weather suit lenses from Olympus and Panasonic. So if you are looking at Olympus or OM Digital Solutions, uh, anyone with the label Pro is weather sealed. Yeah, so it's pretty much easy to identify. Durio says, Hi Robin, do you have any recommendation for off-camera flash system which works universally in every brand? I'm a cheapskate. Nah. You gotta find the one that works uh, with your camera brand, right? Uh, because you have to attach a... Uh, uh, commander on your camera and a slave uh, on the flash so find the one that works for your particular system and well I, I don't know how many camera system that you use but I think there are certain triggers that works universally with different cameras look for Godox John is asking when can John and Andrew join your show John do you see the beginning of the stream or not I can't even start the stream properly. It's something went wrong, right? Like just now I, I tried to go live. I cannot. Like it says that on, on my um studio it's live, but I've been going on for like five, six minutes, still not live. I have to end the stream and create a different stream to go live. Like crazy there. Eh? Imagine you guys coming, right? I have like 100 different problems to solve. Cannot, 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 cannot. <laughs> 
David asks, I uh, says, I can do high res shot of 80 megapixels with my Olympus. High res shot is still different from a true high resolution camera. And you know, we get very, there are situations when things just move. When things move, that pixel shift method with the Olympus or Panasonic cameras, they just don't work as well. It's just very, very, very different. Dave E says, thanks Robin, uh, can I have an old look with a native lens? They are so sharp and clinical. No, I don't like old look. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm more, I'm a forward thinking person and I want them to improve, not going backwards. Tom says, no autofocus, no go for Robin. You should put that on a shirt. Yeah, I know, right? I should, I should make this shirt. Dirk says, hey Robin. Hey Dirk, thanks for being here. Sigma 56 f1.4 is very cheap and I have seen many good picture examples. I'm considering buying it over buying the 45 f1.2. What are you saying? Uh, both are very different systems because 45 f1.2 is a lot wider than 56 f1.4. 45 translates to a typical maybe an 85 millimeters classic focal length. When you go for the Sigma, it's 112 equivalent. That's like, you know, when you deal with any 5mm classic portrait lens, you're still very close to your subject, so communication is quite easy. When you go much longer, like the Sigma, you might, you're might adding a lot of distance between you and the subject, so it's, both are very, 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 very different lenses to work with. I wouldn't compare one to the other. Sigma is a great lens, Olympus is a great lens. If you want to get a Sigma, get a Sigma. If you want to get an Olympus, get an Olympus. But they are, I will use them in very different shoot, shooting scenarios. Yanis says, what do you think of the 8-25? to I remember you had this lens when it came out. I have a 714 but can't use filter for video work. I sold it off. Um, the reason I sold it because I have this Panasonic 9 f1.7 now. Think about that. The 8-25 to is like 5 times bigger than this. Okay, maybe that's exaggeration. I think it's 3 times larger and heavier than this. And that thing is f4, whereas this 9 f1.7 is f1.7. So when I shoot in low light, this gives me a lot more advantage. Lighter, smaller, with f1.7, I can create shallow depth of field. It's no brainer. And this 9 f1.7 costs half of what that 8 to 25 is asking for. So no brainer. I sold it off and I got this 9 f1.7 immediately when it came out. Super Zero said, I have the 40-150 f2.8, its size made me realize that the Leica f1.7 zooms are an okay size. The MZUGO Pro gave me reach, while the zooms gave me more low light flexibility for video. Like, really? I, I, I just can't, like seriously. Especially doing video, right? you need to constantly hold a camera in one position. It just, I will break my wrist, my fingers, my shoulder, I will break my back doing video with such heavy lenses. Hey. When I do video, I do with these lenses. This is a 9 f1.7, perfect for video. Uh, I, I do a lot of my vlogs with this lens. And I do my video with this. This is my main video lens. I can't imagine using heavier lenses. Hey, it's just crazy. Andrew says, nobody mentioning the 90 macro here. I guess not many people doing macro. Ivor says, Godot speeds them all. I agree. John says, I can host the stream. You just do the host. <laughs> I'll produce the show. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Hey, like, you, basically you see, right? How, how my, my live stream works, John. It's basically just me um, chatting with everyone, and which is really, really fun. And everyone has questions and everyone has uh, something to say. So pretty much it's just a Q&A session, right? Whereas like uh, John and Andrew, I love your show so much because... John and Andrew, it's more like you guys have actual topics to talk about and you guys, especially yesterday, right? Um, things that you don't know about wedding photographers or things you don't expect from wedding photographers. That was such a catchy topic and I had so much fun listening to you guys. And you know, you guys, the format of John and Andrew works because John and Andrew, you guys, 
bonds off each other like you have a lot of banters you throw off some ideas and then Andrew will like uh, make fun of it or you have a different spin of things and it's just a nice dynamic between you two and especially you two are in the same industry you're doing wedding photography together you guys are friends so you guys have a very similar thought process whereas like for me here it's very different right like it's not like I have a fixed topic to talk about and when I throw a topic say what is your favorite lens or what is the must-have lens and everyone has their, their own uh, story to tell which makes things uh, a little bit different so yeah we, we, we run on different formats John so I don't see how things can work Rico says, no questions, just happy to get to catch you live at work. Man, how many of you are watching me at work? Don't, don't get into trouble, hey, I don't want to get anyone into trouble. Davey says, okay, thanks for your opinion. <laughs> Super Zero says, I believe the Leica F1.7 zooms was Lumix's answer to people who were using the Sigma 18-25 to F1.8 with a speed booster, also gaining autofocus. Size is relative. Yeah, size is relative, that's true, but still... Micro Four Thirds has its place because its philosophy is about being small, being light, yet delivering fantastic results. And when you move away from that, it's kind of like against the philosophy, right? Drill says, Emily from Micro Four Thirds will be nice guests. They'll give a radiance of joy. Yeah, I'm, guys, I'm, I'm not hosting people yet. Like, I'm barely keeping myself... Oops, sorry, I should, you see it? I'm, I'm making mistakes. I should not be bumping into the mic. I'm barely keeping myself together here, so like, give me some time, like, let me get used to this stream first. I'm really, really trying, guys, like, I'm doing a lot more streams these days, if you haven't noticed. I've been on live streams almost every week now, so give me some time to ease in slowly, you know, get used to doing this, and maybe one day I'll consider bringing people in. Like, I don't want to have, like, 1,000 technical issues, you know, like, I remember one of my earliest things, someone said, hey Robin, if you don't fix this issue, we are leaving. You know how frustrating that is to me? <laughs> you know, for someone who is learning and trying to do these things, you know, it's... Give me time, give me time. Joe Preet says, waiting for the 19 macro price to drop. Lens prices don't drop. Nam says, hello Robin, hey Nam. I want to buy the 18-105 to and for Sony for my A6000. Do you think it's a good enough? I want to take photos of families and children. I will still push for prime lenses. Get a 50 f1.8, get a 35 f1.8 if you can. Because uh, prime lenses with brighter aperture, uh, they allow you to use faster shutter speeds without going crazy high ISO. And that is a huge advantage to get cleaner photos. Trust me, prime lenses is the way to go. Olivier Gadan said, Hi again, Robin. I pair my GS85 with several primes, uh, 20 and 45 lenses and kit zooms. I don't see a big difference in terms of reach, by the way, 100 and 150. Go ahead and get 35, 100 kit. If you don't see a big difference, then may I suggest... Oh, you're looking for like... Um, the kit lenses, right? The one with the f 3.5 to 5.6. Yeah, give it a try first. I think 3500 is a good lens. Uh, Microphone Nerds, Emily, someone just mentioned her name, made a video recently about a must-have lens, like which was the Lumix 3500. So give it a try. Maybe it's good enough for you. David Cruz says, 60 macro is a better deal than a 90 macro. I agree. And some sites actually posted the results that they are testing the optical sharpness. They're saying that 60 macro is actually sharper than the 90 macro lens. Nick Pinnacle Pete says, in terms of image quality, which do you feel is superior? Lawa 10 f2 or Panasonic 9 f1.7? I realize there are other differences between the two lenses. First of all, no autofocus, no go for Robin. <laughs> and I've never tried the Lawa 10 f2. I've tried, the only lower lens that I've tried is the 6 f2. And I think it's a fantastic lens if you need that wide. Uh, but other than that, that Panasonic 9 f1.7 is a super sharp, amazing lens. I'm very happy with this lens. Alan says, hey, I'm also at work now doing post-processing stuff. <laughs> I hope you don't fall asleep though listening to me while you're post-process, Alan, doing your photos. Samuel says, I want to see f0.95 with micro four thirds with autofocus. Two problems. One, the lenses will be super large. And two, the lenses will be super expensive. So I'm not sure. 
if they can make it small enough to work and make it affordable enough for people to buy. And Trick says, I was watching still at work. Man, you guys. Sixters Backmaster says, I'm working on editing a one hour video for client. was still 40 minutes ago. Oh my goodness. Please, please watch this lives later. Hey, you can please focus on your work and get that edit done. Oh my goodness. John says, you're doing great. You can do it. Oh, thanks for the support, John. John is, guys, if you don't know who John is, uh, John is a fellow wedding photographer in Kuala Lumpur. He's a professional photographer. He's one of the best wedding photographer that I know. Go to his channel, check him out. You know what? I'm just going to pull his channel out. Just give me a minute. <laughs> give him a subscribe. Hey, let's see. Oh my goodness. What am I doing? All right. I'm going to copy his channel and put it on the chat. Right. I'm going to highlight John's channel. Go to John's channel, give him a subscribe. And uh, one of his recent videos, I'm actually featured in the video. Yeah, you can see me on his channel. Right. Show some love, guys. <laughs> right. NOP says, Hey, I'm doing a really boring map, working on a bank holiday, and your stream made my day. Oh, thank you so much, man. That is so kind of you to let me know. The drunk wedding photographer says, unless you have top-notch top internet connection, it's better to have a guest in person, not Zoom. That is true. That is true. Thanks for the reminder, man. Who is Serafin says, hey, hey, nice to see you here again. Hello, super rainy day in Orlando. You are handling the live streaming like a long time. Oh, you... You are so kind, man. So sweet. Thank you so much. I am no pro. I think um, Jimmy Chang from Red35 handles it way better than me. I think Rob Track does a way better job than me. So yeah, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. Give me time. Give me time. Uh, NLP said, do your stuff. We like it. Thank you so much for the support. Puffin Cake says, Puffin Cafe says, uh, one with the proof, two compact, three fast aperture prime, four silent autofocus, four any length to your preference. 28 to 50 for me must have is Fuji 23 F2 weather resistance. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, any length to your preference. Yeah, all these are important criteria. Right? I just mentioned weather ceiling, small, fast aperture prime. I think pretty much all micro photos lenses are silent at this point. Uh, length of preference for me. I would prefer to work with 50 equivalents, so in micro photos term, it's about 25. Durio says, guys, should I call my boss for a screenshot this stream? <laughs> you guys, man, exploring with rotten fish. What's the most I like for micro photos sensor camera is that three camera brands share the same mount, Panasonic Olympus and Blackmagic. Yes. Dimitri Balero said, 20 f my 7 really leaves my... Uh, EM10 Mark II, a great lens. I need a wider lens. I'm between a 12.45 or 9.1.7, but I cannot decide yet. I would say if you can live with the 20 f1.7 so far, then give the 9 f1.7 a chance because, uh, hey, consistent, right? f1.7, you don't lose aperture brightness and you can keep it really, really compact. Dave says, what is your favorite 25 lens? I got to say 25 f1.2 Pro. Ivar says the Lawa 6 F2 is great for close up as it's a Leica 9mm. But then again, uh, may I remind you these two are very different lenses. They are wide angle lenses, but that Lawa 6mm is like crazy, 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 crazy wide. You gotta be very, very careful. You can shoot your own feet if you're not careful. Whereas the Leica uh, Panasonic 9mm is just a normal wide. So, you know, I, I wouldn't compare these two lenses. Super Zero says, Bottom line for me, as a dedicated Micro Photos user, Leica F1.7 zooms are worth it. Yet another reason not to venture off into full frame. Always the option to still keep it small with smaller lenses. But here is the thing, right? Like, I can get full frame F1.4 lenses at a smaller size than the Panasonic F1.7 Leica. And full frame F1.4 F1 or F even F1.8 on full frame it's a different story than a micro four thirds f1.7 and they are smaller and they are cheaper like the prices on this f1.7 zooms on the panasonic they just don't make sense 
John says, thanks for the plug. You don't have to. Oh, you deserve it, John. John is so hardworking here. Like, guys, if you don't trust me, if you look at my videos, right, the videos that I do, because I am not a videographer, I'm just going to admit it. I'm a photographer and I'm a very simple person. I just make my video to a certain quality. But when you look at John's video, his production quality, man. <laughs> if I'm here, it's like way up there. It's crazy. See, Sixters, subscribe to John. Thank you, Sixters. Brana says, the fishing vlog of yours is so great. Having fun watching you sing. <laughs> oh, yeah, guys. One thing I didn't say earlier about my fishing trip. I'm just going to show off the fish that I took. One thing I didn't say about that, that trip is that I was actually seasick all the time. I was puking. I was like, it was... It was a great adventure, don't get me wrong. It was still magical seeing the fish. It was amazing seeing uh, our hosts and the guides, Nawishat and Shamin. Uh, both our hosts are amazing people. They are ethical. They, they promote sustainable fishing. Uh, watching them in the elements, doing amazing work. It's just inspiring. I was, it was truly motivational. But I was seasick like all the time. And man, that was not fun. The seasickness part was not fun. <laughs> Lumiere Obscure said Hey Robin If you are given the choice Between a tube macro lens Or an autofocus macro lens Which would you pick? Autofocus Autofocus All day long <laughs> Alright Let's see We are Almost Three hours Into the stream Three hours into the stream And We still have more than 100 concurrent viewers That is crazy Man where did you guys come from? I'm just gonna drink some more water. Ah. Oh. Whew, felt like I've just ran a marathon. <laughs> oh. Gosh. Guys. Again, I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for being here. You know, like I always say, there's no Robin Wong without you guys. And I mean it. You know, it's like I continue to do what I do. I'm able to do what I do because you guys are here. You guys continue to support me. You guys continue to watch my new videos. And for that, I appreciate, appreciate you guys so much. I cannot thank you guys so much uh, enough, you know. And I also truly appreciate a lot of you who are so generous. You guys have bought me coffee. You guys contributed directly to my PayPal or you guys uh, send money through Super Chat. Uh, I really appreciate that because every single contrib contribution, small and big, they enable me to continue making videos, to continue on uh, shooting more content for you guys. So really, you guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. All right, we have more comments coming in. AJ Kali said, I recently found your channel. Why not full frame for you? Because micro four thirds is awesome. And micro four thirds is so small, like you wouldn't find a full frame lens this small. All right. And I'm not getting any younger and I treasure my health. I prefer to work with smaller cameras and lenses. And I find that uh, micro four thirds cameras and lenses are definitely good enough for what I do. I shoot professionally, I deliver to my clients, and they come back to me, they're happy with my shots. And if I'm happy with this system, why not? And the shots that I get from these cameras and lenses, they are phenomenal. And if I'm happy with the shots, why go full frame, right? Full frame, they are bigger, they're heavier, they're more expensive. Like overall, whatever system that I have now, if I were to switch the equivalent system in full frame, it will cost at least twice as much. I have to spend double the amount of money that I've spent on my micro photo system. And I have to break my back. You know, I have a lot of friends who are starting to have health issues. They are having back problems, slip this because they're handling full frame lenses like 7200 F2.8 lenses. Uh, they are breaking their wrist. They have shoulder problem. They have pain there and here. So I want to continue doing photography when I'm old. I don't want to give up photography and the only way to do that, the only way to, to keep myself going and still keep my health 
is to get smaller, to, to use smaller and lighter system. And I think Micro Four Thirds is the right balance between giving me something truly portable, something truly light that I can run around with. I can fit like three cameras and like 10 lenses in a small bag and still move with agility, still go around and get my shots, right? And I can't do that with full frame. Kuris Serafin says, uh, I photographed a wedding dress fitting for a bride a few weeks ago, following them to three different stores and the employees kept asking what an Olympus camera is. They only heard of Nikon. Oh, that's kind of sad, right? That's kind of sad. Super Zero says, but Robin, your logic means I need two systems instead of one, which is far more cost costly. What do you mean? I only use one system, Micro Four Thirds, and that works perfectly fine for me. Super Zero says, my kit is... Uh, kit is Keep it small kit includes 75 f1.8, 25 f1.7, and 15 f1.7. Nine moments. Yep, all the f1.7, they work perfectly fine. Samuel says, I'm a wedding photographer with full frame for clients. You are antagonist. I usually use Nikon D5. <laughs> Whoa, 200 f2. I have a GX9, GS85, GH5 for video, and personal photo 12, 17, 25, 45, 75. Yeah. Well, I shoot weddings with uh, Micro Four Thirds. My clients, uh, they are perfectly fine with it. So no worries. Uh, use what works for you. Hey, if you are strong enough to carry that D5 with a 200 F2, no worries. John, <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Thank you so much for Super Chat, man. Oh, John is so generous. He, he treated me lunch earlier, man. What are you doing? I owe you. I'll, I'll buy coffee next time. We go for some really nice coffee in town, eh? And what's that coffee place right again? Um, the one in uh, Fahrenheit uh, 88, was it? Fahrenheit, uh, the, the one that you introduced us to. We should, we should go back there again, have some really nice coffee. Hmm. Bruna says, you are great, Robin. Thank you so much, Bruna. I appreciate that. David says, uh, not to crown closer to a proper Leica with elegance and functionality of Japanese engineering. That is true. That is true. Ivara says, I don't have a must-have lens as I will change lenses depending on the purpose, wildlife, flower, close-up, macro, nightscape, or deep sky, family, and portraits. That is true. Choose and use the right lenses for the right job. I always say that. Norm says, hey, Robin. Hey, Norm. How much actual print work do you do? I think most people should print in order to really appreciate the camera capability. When I used to shoot weddings, uh, I print a lot for my clients. Uh, photo books, especially uh, when I do pre-wedding jobs, I print for them. Uh, but I'm doing less and less weddings these days and I only did like three wedding shoots this year. <laughs> I think John is like, what the hell, Robin? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really call myself a wedding photographer anymore. So as I move away from weddings, I don't print so much for my clients because most of the things I do with my clients are event coverage. Uh, mostly they use my photographs for social media posts or they send it for media, for which were got printed in newspapers, by the way. Yes, my photographs got printed in newspapers. Does that count? Anyway, um, but personally, I also print photo books for personal consumptions. Uh, I, I just sent my photographs for print uh, just yesterday. So I'm waiting for a new photo book to arrive. So this year I'm, I've printed three photo books. So the third photo book is coming. If you check my earlier videos, or I think it's maybe in my vlog channel, I actually vlog about um, my photo books. I, I show the page to page and if we meet in person, I don't mind sharing my photo book with you in person. So photo books are only for personal consumptions. I print three to four books per year. Each book about 40 to 50 pages. Uh, that's about 40, 50 photographs each book. That's for purely for personal consumption. Uh, but for clients, less and less. I've photographs being printed large, blown up large before. Uh, no issue whatsoever. But yeah, I agree with you. Print is the way to go for a photographer to grow. And if you are serious about your work, you should print your work. Samuel says, greetings from Canary Island, Spain. Thanks for reading us. Give us your honest opinion. I have some Micro Four Thirds thanks to you. No worries. I hope you enjoy your Micro Four Thirds system. David says, Micro Four Thirds is about the same size as 110 film. That is true. This side towards the screen says, been busy this morning, but here. Hi, Robin. Hey, good to see you here. <laughs> Alan says, Robin, you are getting us in trouble already. That guy had his work overdue almost an hour ago and my editing is slowing down. Aya, watch later lah, Alan. Yo. Amiru says, what's up, Robin? Hey, Amiru. Thanks for checking out the stream. Apa kabar? 
Andrea says, Hi Robin, I like the 75 f1.8. Also have the 45 f1.8, but I often need to equip the 12 to 40 f2.8. Haven't tried the 20 f1.7 Panasonic yet. Maybe something in that focal length should give, could give me a small... I wouldn't recommend the 20 f1.7 simply because the autofocus is not the fastest if you have used the Olympus 45f f1.8 and if you have used the 12 to 40 f2.8 then you use the Panasonic 20 f1.7 you realize you realize that the autofocus is kind of slow <laughs> right and let's see wow we still have a lot of comments Andre says I have the 25 f1.7 Panasonic, but don't like it. Would like to give a try to the 9mm Panasonic 2, but don't have a chance yet. I think you'll like the Panasonic 9mm uh, if you need wide-angle lens. I think that's one of the best lenses that you can have. Very compact, very small, and yet it gives bright aperture f1.7. Fabio Arjo said, Hi Robin, really enjoy your videos. Thanks for sharing. I'm a hobbyist shooting an EM10 Mark IV. I recently got into astrophotography. Do you have any tips regarding astrophotography? No, but uh, if you want to learn about astrophotography, I highly recommend that you check out uh, Benjamin, uh, Benjamin Chappell, if I remember his name correctly. <laughs> the Narrow Man channel. Uh, let me just pull out this channel for you. Uh, let me just find this the Roban channel if I can get this channel to load alright found it alright so Fabio if you go to this particular site Narrowband channel uh, say hi to Ben for me if you go there uh, he shares exclusively about astrophotography using micro filter system and I'm sure you'll learn a lot from him. Uh, he's a much better person to, uh, to talk to you about uh, astrophotography. John says, you can come to my place. I make you coffee. Oh, it's so nice of you. Okay, I'll get you lunch next. Next lunch for me, okay? Andrew says, any wedding couple that demands five feet prints of their wedding does demanding full frame are probably nightmare clients to avoid anyway. I have no issue printing up like life-size photographs with my micro filters cameras i've done them before no issue whatsoever the drunk wedding photographer says i use film for weddings nikon f6 and the d700 but yes i'm hoping the em1 will soon replace all that yeah em1 is definitely good enough amiru says still using the 14 lumix you sold to me hey you are dead amiru hi how are you on daily basis but i have a feeling of upgrading ah uh, you can consider the Lum the panasonic 15 f1.7 i think that's a solid 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 option right roberto says olympus 25 f1.8 or panasonic 25 f1.7 as i have mentioned earlier the panasonic 25 f1.7 has focus shift issues meaning that the focusing uh, changes as you stop down the aperture and you might get some out-of-focus images as you should at f2.8, f4 uh, but it should be fine at f1.7 as you go to f5.6, f6.3 then the focus comes back to accurate again so do some research on the focus shift issues on the Panasonic uh, if you're okay with that then go for it but that Olympus 25 f1.8 is totally free from any focus shift problems Marvin Arc says, if you're going to buy a second-hand lens, does it matter if the lens barrel hood is scuffed? Uh, be careful of the, any issues, cosmetic damages, if it's dented or if it's cracked, uh, avoid buying it. But if it's just like a minor scratch, like hairline scratch, it's perfectly fine. Just wear and tear, right? Roger says, recent acquisition and unlikely for me is the... 8mm fish islands. One word, awesome. Never thought uh, as much as I do. Yeah, if you enjoy the barrel distortion, why not? Go crazy with it, right? Kemandu says, thanks for your work. I value your opinions. My two cents, the best lens for pro for travel. Friends get jealous when they see me shooting in the rain. Yeah. Weather ceiling is so awesome, right? I think it should be for every lens. Angelo Play for One says, Thanks, Robin. Till next time. Thanks for the chat, responding to my questions. You did also find the Leica F1.7 does not make sense compared to full frame F1.8 lens. They are so much cheaper. I know, right? I know, right? 
Yeah, AJ Khalid says, I am primarily portrait photographer deciding between EMR Mark II and EMR Mark III. Is the face detection worth it for the EMR Mark III? The EMR Mark III's face detection is not worth it. It's still not quite there yet. If you compare what Canon is doing, if you compare what Sony is doing, I have to be very honest with you, the face uh, autofocus is still lagging behind. But I think EMR Mark II, EMR Mark III differences is not so large. But if you were to get the EMR Mark III, get it for a newer processor, get it for uh, upgraded uh, capabilities of the camera, not just for the face autofocus tracking, but there are a lot of other things that's better in the camera as well. Time check. It is almost, almost midnight in Malaysia. I'm going to stay on for maybe another 5 to 10 minutes, um, reading a few more comments, and I'll call it a night. I've uh, been on the stream for almost three hours continuously without a break. <laughs> huh. 18 Ready says Olympus 12 to 40 f2.8, absolutely. That's one of the more popular lenses as well. Andrew Menon says, I have not printed larger than A1. Very happy with the results. Yeah, actually, you can try print larger than A1 and still you can get really good results. I think. The trick about printing is the printer, right? The person printing the photograph needs to know what he's doing. If you just try to photograph in and just print, even if you have like a medium format camera, you still can get lousy results, right? So yeah, the person who is printing needs to know how to optimize the print. Fabio says, thanks a lot. She's from Brazil. No worries, Fabio. Alex says, Robin, I'm new Micro Four Threads user. Welcome to the system. I have an EMR Mark II, 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro. I'm really happy, so I need more telephoto. Which one would, you, would I buy? Do you recommend a Sigma 56 f1.4? What kind of telephoto do you need? I think most people will go for like 75 f1.8 or 40 to 150 f2.8 Pro, right? Because 56 f1.4 is just too close to the 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro. So I highly suggest that you get something that you totally cannot do with the 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro, something like a 75 f1.8 or 40 to 150 f2.8 Pro. They will make more sense, right? Rico says, going against your preferences, but I really enjoy the Voigtlanders. They are very heavy, manual focus only, but they deliver a very lovely film-like look. I have a problem when people say film-like. <laughs> film-like is just saying that it has flaws, right? It has some imperfections. And like, I'm not against that. Like, everyone is free to have their own preferences, what they like and dislike. It's just that, when you talk about softness or if you talk about like bloom or flare, all these things, like I understand there are, these are characters. These are characters, right? But uh, I don't see how they can make photographs better because for me, when I'm capturing a photograph, I want to remember the photograph as close as to reality. And other than that, if you're editing to manipulate it to, to taste, you want to add like film simulation effect, you want to add certain color cast, you want to add some softness to it, vignetting, that's to taste. But as I capture the photograph, I want it to be as close to reality as possible. Set123 said, hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Doing this live stream for almost three hours now. Currently, I'm using a Panasonic G9. Do you think I should move to EM1 line or should I move to a bigger sensor? I'm still keeping the G9 either way. Thank you. So I guess the question is, why do you want to move to a bigger sensor camera? Uh, is there anything about the G9 that you're not happy with? And if there is anything that you're not happy with, um, will the full frame camera solve the problem? Because sometimes they don't. <laughs> sometimes you can solve the problem by buying a different lens or by learning a different technique or uh, improving your skills, right? Not necessarily just upgrading a camera to a full frame. Uh, a lot of people think that, oh, if I have uh, the better camera, then I'll get better photographs, but that's always not the case. Right, so you have to ask yourself, why are you not? Uh, so are you happy with the G9? If you are happy, then why are you upgrading? You know, yeah. Andrew Benner says, I have the seven millimeters, uh, seven artisans, barely use it, but I have some ideas on how I can get creative with it. Go for it. Amiru says, will you be reviewing the Nikon ZF? It's my dream camera because of the retro look and the full frame temptation. 
I don't have connection with Nikon Malaysia. Well, technically, there's no Nikon Malaysia anymore. They're under Futuromic. But I'm doing a first impression video of the ZF. Uh, I got my hands on it earlier today. Uh, spoilers on what's coming up very, very soon. So I'm just sharing some quick thoughts on the camera. But uh, to do a full review, I will need a camera for at least two weeks. And even that two weeks, uh, it's not enough time. One month will be ideal, but who is going to loan you a camera for one month, right? Normally, people will just loan you a camera for one or two weeks. Uh, I don't have that kind of connection with Futuromic to get a camera off them for two weeks. So I don't think I'll be doing a full review for the camera, but I'm sharing some uh, first impressions, my quick thoughts on Nikon ZF. That's definitely coming. All right, uh, time check. It's five minutes past midnight in Malaysia. We still have about almost 100 people viewing. That's impressive. Eighteen ready ninety three says best regards from Italy. Thank you so much for having read my comment. No worries, my pleasure. Uh, may I ask you some suggestion about the telephoto zoom lens? My dream would be the one hundred to four hundred, but it's too expensive. If you don't need the four hundred n, maybe you can get like uh, seventy five three hundred or uh, Panasonic one hundred to three hundred. I think both are great lenses. Olympus 75 to 300 or Panasonic 100 to 300. See if that 300 is good enough. If you absolutely need the 400, then of course Panasonic 100 to 400. I think there are no cheaper options than that. Truthseeker asked, I have the EM1 Mark 1. Is it time to upgrade to Mark 2? What's the upgrade? Yes! I think EM1 Mark 2 is like better image sensor, you have 20% more resolution like one stop better dynamic range, better high ISO performance, better image stabilization, better viewfinder. Everything in this camera is better, right? Uh, you have much better features, you have pro capture mode, you have dual cut slots, you have faster card, you have 4K video recording, uh, much bigger and better electronic viewfinder. You have ev everything is better. Better continuous autofocus. What else? Faster autofocus. Oh, I, I can't think of anything about the EM1 that's better than EM1 Mark II. So if you're thinking about the upgrade, it's definitely worth the upgrade. Okay, guys, um, I'm getting a little bit tired. I've been on for more than three hours, actually, and it's past midnight in Malaysia, and it's been a long day for me. I was out the entire day. Uh, I have a meeting with a client in the morning earlier, and then uh, after the meeting, I went on to the YL Camera Fair, and I actually did a video there. I filmed myself, did a video there at YL Camera Fair, and, uh, and I met up with my friends, John and Andrew. I called up with a bunch of people, and after that, I came back from the YL Camera Fair, I immediately edited the video that I did in the morning. After I edited the video, then I... Just in time, I uploaded to YouTube, parked it there, and I went, came on here live on the stream talking to you guys. So it's been like a non-stop thing again and again, like on and on and on since morning until night. And now it's already past midnight. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit tired. So anyways, um, thank you so much for indulging me. Thank you so much for coming on here on this live stream. Thank you so much. We have been getting like consistently more than 100 viewers from the start until the end of the stream. And that is impressive. That is crazy. Uh, you guys are amazing. You guys are just so, so, so awesome. So thank you so much for being here. If you enjoy seeing this stream, if you want me to do more streams, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal links. It's up here. Uh, you can check out the buy me a coffee link or you can check out the description below also. You can click on it or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Uh, any small contribution goes a long way. It will definitely help me to continue making more content, sharing more tips, doing more POV videos, doing sharing about photography, sharing new photographs with you guys, doing more camera reviews and lenses, and looking forward to, to share all this new content with you guys. And I'll also look forward to more, doing more streams. I'll try to stay on this timetable. New videos every Monday can be tips and tricks on cameras, can be sharing about photography or reviewing new cameras on lenses. Like last Monday, I was doing a mini review of this uh, uh, Yongnuo 12-35 at 2.3.5 lens. Do check out this uh, mini review if you have not done so. That was last Monday. New video coming out next Monday as well. And then followed up by a live stream to further talk about uh, the similar topic on that video on Monday. So Thursdays, live streams, next Thursday, Please come on again. I'll look forward to see you guys again and check with you guys. And yeah, 
That's it for now. Take care and please go out and take a moment for the graphs. Bye bye.